Late Key says, I had two weeks vacation now and ended up staying awake till 3 a.m., getting up at 7 a.m., so my sleep schedule is poop, while also slacking on emergence time out. Yeah, that's that's what happens. I mean, for me, if I'm not sleeping a lot, my immersion suffers, for sure, because uh, my attention span is so reliant on my sleep. Like, I have, I have so little attention span that I have to do everything I can to protect it. And if one thing falls out, the whole house of cards just comes crumbling down. Yeah, it affects mine in the way that it's, it's a bit different because I have everything set up like, oh, I'm going to do this at this time and do this at this time. And then as soon as you sleep too long, it's like, oh, I'm behind. Like, you just feel like you're behind. So you just like, uh, maybe it's better actually because you just try and like grind it out as quick as possible to like catch up. Yeah. <laughs> like on the time, like, yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. I, everyone's different though, man. Like, like some people just sleep like so easily as well yeah because my girlfriend she she falls asleep in about five seconds like i'm not even joking yeah i've never seen this before and i was like what is that like how do you even do that because it takes me about an hour of just lying there no phone no nothing just lying there even with all the things like the gray scale and the blue light fills everything it just doesn't it's like my brain's still going or something i don't know man yeah it's tough and usually but like everyone, i everyone's it's easier for me to sleep if I've had some physical exertion. Like I walk about a mile or two every day and um, I like to try to get at least a little bit more exercise, you know, so yeah. that I can just feel a little bit more tired. Hey, Marine, thank you for following. Yeah, if you don't do anything, you just don't feel tired at all, like at all. Yeah. Not even, not even the tiniest amount. But yeah, I was, I want to make that post. You remember that post that I made on our Korean about just like all the stuff, like flipping vitamin D tablets and stuff, <laughs> and actually exercising. <laughs> that is such a good like thing because people don't care about it. You know? It's like, true. Even it's true. even basic things like just brush your damn teeth every night, man, and every morning, like just do it, just do it, man. Like people need to start. It's like a habit. You know, like once it's become a habit, you don't even think about it. Like, when you, are you gonna wash your face? Yeah, I'm gonna wash my face because that's what I do. You know, like that's, yeah. that's my jam. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's like making habits and like, there's some things that people never think about or search. Like, I don't know, just doing exercise. Like, exercise is so good for you in every way. I agree. Um, and I'm also, uh, I'm also a. Uh, I personally really enjoy uh, meditation and even in, in the way that it relates to language re uh, learning, I just feel like I can focus. Uh, like I said, you know, my focus, my amount of focus is so small that I have to protect it as much as I can. If I, yeah. if I am meditating in the morning and the evening, um, it's just, it's like I get less distracted by other things. And so that when it comes time to learn, I can actually just like, it, it's just everything's smoothed out. I can just kind of focus on it. It's much more. Uh, yeah. effective uh, it's, it's something that i need to get into but every time i see it, it's like i always wonder how, how just how do you do it? like what, what am i supposed to do it's like there's no if somebody just made a guide yeah like a five minute guide just do this do this this is this i'd be like yeah that's cool man i need to try that now <laughs> right but well, it's, it's like i've tried doing it but like i don't know it's, it's, it's hard it's hard to do and just like just be focused on like literally nothing yeah well like, there's so there's a couple like, of there's different ways of meditating, and I have some experience of a few different kinds. Um, a lot of the my practice is zazen, which is um, from the Zen Buddhist kind of school of of teaching, and that's just because that's that was happened to be the place where I learned, um, you know, more in depth how to meditate. That's the style they do, so that's what I learned. But I've also dabbled in like mindfulness meditation, um, you know, awareness yeah. of the breathing, and then concentration meditations. Um, and just, there's some different kind of stuff, but essentially a lot of people, um, I think a lot of people are misled into thinking that like, because people don't talk about it in, in a, in a, an effective way, um, meditation, a lot of people expect it to be like, well, to, to, to meditate, you just turn off your brain and sit there. It's like, well, no, uh, you can't no, just you turn can't off just your brain. Just like <laughs> very hard yeah you know, there's, there's, that, that's the thing as well there's so many different ways of doing it it's, it's very hard to say like which one yeah like what you should be doing exactly and i think the one that is this seems like it would be the most successful to a lot of people is to um is to you know find a comfortable upright posture and sit there and um for for most people following the breath um it's going to be doable and just counting your breaths because yeah. Eventually, you you're gonna feel really conscious of your breathing, but 
you just kind of uh, in, after time it, you just kind of uh, are able to sort of watch your breath and not try to force it so much um, and then you just feel one way is to like feel the air going out of in and out of your nostrils like find the point on your nostrils where you can feel it the most prominently and just focus on that yeah. position just that little point so just focusing your attention on, on one little point is good um yeah that's like a, a mind, mindfulness thing isn't it like like because i remember before yeah someone was telling me about it's like there's like these five things like something like five things you can see four things you can smell three things you can taste and like it's it's, it's kind of weird but at the same like it's to stop people having like panic attacks and stuff basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like it's kind of interesting but yeah, so one of the meditations that I've done in the past and that I'd sometimes do is, is that is just fo following, following that point in my, you know, where I can feel the breath coming in and out of my nostril and just count an in breath and an out breath up to 10 and then start over. And so for me, a lot of times I'd never make it to 10 and I just gently just start back over. And it's like, yeah, it's just about like noticing that you lost track account, uh, you lost track of time or you're counting and then you just yeah. start over. Like, cause that's all there is to do. It's just like, oh, okay, I'll start at one again. Yeah. So but, uh, yeah, you, doing that for like 15 minutes. Do, yeah, you only need to do like 10, 15 minutes or something. I've seen people say like, yeah, even just starting at like five minutes is, is good. Yeah. But people say that a lot with like language learners, well, isn't it? It's like, oh yeah, just do like a minute a day. And then like you start <laughs> getting into it and it's like, yeah. you start building up, building up, like doing what you're doing because you start enjoying it. As, it yeah, but, I think, well, my Discord just restarted completely. Okay. Well, okay. Here, let me uh, go back into this. Now you guys can see behind the curtain a little bit. <laughs> I meant to. I meant to go to. Uh, I meant to go to this screen. Well, okay, we're a little off center there. Like nuke the server. Just nuked the whole stream room. Um, just did. Yeah, my Discord just like crashed and restarted. Uh, I think you just messed up the whole thing, bro. So let me come back. Uh, oh, I think we're gonna be. Shoot. I think we're gonna be reversed again. Remember how I told? Uh, let me let me go okay, back. I'll, I'll see. I'll see in your spot for a bit. Don't worry, bro. I'll, I'll just keep the seat warm, you know. <laughs> Let's keep the seat warm. Oh, why? This is funny. Um, tell you what. Go on. Close off your video, and I'll the start video, mine. Yeah. Go on then. And then there we go. Like and now you can start you. yours. As it worked. Yeah. Yeah, boy, we on it. All right. There you go. So that was some interesting uh, gymnastics that we're doing here. Yeah, that's nice. And back on the back on the stream. Hopefully, we're sitting in the right seats. Visor uh, or Visor Visor says, "I recently started trying out meditation to help with concentration. It was interesting. Looking forward to seeing how it progresses." Uh, yeah, like as we were saying, um, I think um, it's uh, it's one of those things where I really do think that actually five minutes of meditation a day um, is going to be more beneficial than zero. Um, you can actually see a benefit from doing five minutes a day. But the most important thing is starting that habit because it's when you do meditation every day is where you actually see results um, or at least frequently, you know, but it's it's much easier to do it every day. It's just that's that's when you you notice like you do that for a few weeks, you're going to be like, holy moly, I actually feel a little bit different. So, yeah. and then I I, I, it takes a few just, months um, for, well, I was just going to say it also takes a few months at, before the, the, like the brain plasticity to, to actually start like making permanent changes to your brain. And they're really helpful changes. It's better or worse. Uh, I'm going to say it's worse. <laughs> There we go. Should Looks good. Enough light. Looks good. Until the sun, the sun goes down. Sun, sun's been going down like an hour earlier now. It's coming back to winter. Okay, yeah. so um, we were getting yeah. caught up in some random stuff, but uh, I, for those yeah, of fine. you who don't know, I wanted to introduce the guest on today's stream. 
and it is uh, somebody who has been learning Korean for a very long time, uh, decades at least. Decades. <laughs> Might be no. somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Retro, how about you introduce yourself and tell us about yourself? Um, uh, I'm Retro. My actual name's Alex, but yeah, that's irrelevant. But um, yeah, so I've been learning Korean for two years and then I set up the Korean Fluency Path. That was basically because there were so many questions through the MIA disc. I was just like, you know, what, I'm just going to write this up. Because people just kept coming in like, oh, well, what should I do, man? What should I do? Like, so I just set this up with from. It was partly like Giga was saying about like what she was using like to learn and then I basically put that with what I was doing and then like what other people were saying as well but it's always like um like what's it called like evolving you know like yeah so in like five years some people might have used it and been like yeah this wasn't good this was good and then it's gonna look fucking it's gonna look gonna look sick in like two years or three years yeah well and also like the uh resources I think even just in the last few years have been changing um and yeah, yeah, and people yeah. are say, um, really trying to gather good stuff right now yeah I, I want somebody needs to just make something that's just so good that you don't need to do half of this and half of that and then switch around like you just do that and then that's it like you know how japanese has the take him even that that's probably right. not even that good to be honest but it's just like the one thing that everyone's recommending you know? like somebody needs to make that yeah and, and i think just stick that in there and be like nice I think the take him honestly the take him isn't that pretty similar to well it's it's an integrated I checked it out a little bit right it's a it's a grammar resource but it also includes uh, sample sentences with vocabulary that uh, or am, am I getting this wrong it is grammar and vocabulary and it's presented in an I plus one like kind of format no, no I, don't, I don't think it's, I don't even think it's that I think it just all uses really basic words and like sentences. It, it, it has sentences because I, I did look through it once, but it's, it just looks so bland. Like if you look at Korean grammar in use and you look through that, it's like, damn, it, it just looks nicer and it's, it's easier True. to go through. You've got three examples with pictures and it's like, yeah, this is nice to go through. But then when you look at taking, it's literally just black and white. Yeah. And it's just, oh my God, this is like depressing. Huh? Yeah, like, it's very. Somebody needs to just make a, a nice, a nice grammar book that just tells you everything and not give you like stupid stuff that's never gonna come up you know yeah well i mean korean grammar and use is pretty good as far as that criteria yeah, goes pretty, it, do, it doesn't really need much on top of it to be honest it just needs like the advanced one wasn't so much like random stuff gotcha like, it did, it, in fact it would be better if it didn't the problem with the advanced one was a uh, it just has so much vocab that's like just rare as hell like you're just never gonna see it when I was, or, mm. like you only see it after a while yeah, it seems like they yeah. maybe they should have just focused on the advanced grammar and not tried to weave uh, in yeah, and, and weird just give you, like, words. Some really basic sentences. Yeah, exactly. But it's it's like they're trying to say, like, oh yeah, this is this is only for news. So they just stick like a <laughs> bunch of things that will only ever come up on the news. It's like, yeah, well, I can't do this yet because I don't understand the sentence. Even though it's in English, it's like it's not the same, you know, because you don't really like acquire it through the context. You're just looking at the English sentence, like, yeah, oh, okay, that's what it means. Uh, yeah. so Speaking of the news, do you ever uh, read the news? Do you read much news? What's your relationship uh, with that? I don't. I don't really read much news, but I read like the headlines. Mm. But it's, it's just become easier and easier. Like I don't know. Maybe it's just like the stuff I'm reading. Like it's not actually that difficult, but it's harder than something like English. Like I was talking with someone about English, and it's like when I think about the news in English, we just use so many like regular phrases and regular words like in the news, but they just use like all right like you got this word no 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 all right we're gonna use this one because we're, we're better and he's, they're all just like it's all a lot of um like the chinese chinese words basically ah uh, i but, see well there's like uh some amount of tradition uh some cultural tradition and stuff right of, of those being more formal is that the deal yeah yeah pretty much that's yeah. what i've heard but i don't know i think they just do it on purpose to make it deliberately <laughs> hard <one>. yeah <laughs> But the thing is, at the end of the day, Koreans can understand the news. Like they don't have a problem reading the news, so it's just something that you should work towards anyway. Yeah, like, I think as far as American news goes, um, anything that you find on the television uh, is going to be the most dumbed down kind of content that yeah, you can it's imagine. Like it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and you really have to kind of dive into, uh, and uh, and then a lot of the written news sometimes is is also deliberately obtuse but for maybe a different reason 
um, just, uh, just, I don't know, deliberately trying to make themselves sound hard to understand. Looks like we'll, we'll probably get you back your video back in. Oh, I died again? Yeah, facts, it takes effort to get real detail. Yes. <laughs> you guys could see me, right? We'll get him back in. Yeah, yeah. we see you. All right. And I can hear uh, you. Am I in the right chair? You're in the right chair. Uh, uh, that's and cool. We left on track. Yeah, we didn't pull any like what, what, secret what, what magic you, tricks. Um, what were you saying anyway? Because I completely lost you. Uh, let's see. I, probably. Oh yeah, I was talking about how there's some news, some maybe written news that is is written kind of in a deliberately. Uh, it feels deliberately obtuse, kind of just a roundabout yeah, yeah, way yeah, of writing just things. Like trying to make it, especially like politics news. So yeah. A lot of the sites that give you the news and the sites that like. Just start using the dumbest words like no one's ever used this word in their life yeah and they're just yeah. like thesaurus man and the thing i think <laughs> the thing in english is when someone uses a long word that just doesn't need to be there it's like like they oh they use the thesaurus or something because nobody yeah. uses that word you know it's like it's like there's no reason to use that word there yeah so that's what i feel with english i feel like it's a failure to communicate effectively it's a, like a failure on the person yeah, yeah, yeah. who's trying to communicate what they do it's it's that I, you know and then also some people like they know that everything that they're saying is just word salad so they have to kind of hide that by using a bunch of yeah. weird words trying to hit word count. <laughs> yeah <laughs> trying to hit word count noble spark oh. how's it going good to see you um uh, oh um, all right anyway, on top of that so i also have a blog as well that i started it's kind of a blog it's kind of a website same thing really but yeah i'll just post random stuff on there like mainly stuff to help people with their learning like how they can think differently about their learning especially a lot of people who do like traditional like textbook methods and whatever yeah i'll put that in chat uh retro learns korean dot com yeah there, there is a chance that in a few years or i don't know if it ever kicks off i might actually just change the url and stuff so i'll have to go back and like rechange all the links and everything but for now you'll probably just stay there yeah, so um, for those of you who have not taken the time to check it out, because um, I know you've been sharing it in the MIA Discord and everything, there's some really good articles in there, and I feel like I feel like it's really kind of that you you do a good job of hitting those key points of of the 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 things that you that are important, the things that you need to be paying attention to if you want to learn Korean. Yeah, um, it's ultimately a simple process like you just yeah, you, <laughs> you learn the words you understand yeah. you learn how to understand the, the words and you just keep going <laughs> yeah it's, the thing is i think that a lot as well when you think about mia and like matt's doing his q a's and stuff it's like it's so simple like the, the idea of it is so simple but you would be surprised how many people like if you go onto the the MIA subreddit, it's like, there's so many like weird questions and like oh, someone yeah. asked me a weird question yesterday. So about the fluency path, I sent them it because they were asking about Korean and like language learning or something like the language learning subreddit. So I sent them the thing and they're like, oh, do I do I just do like one a day or something? And then like it's like, you you know, if you don't understand like basic theory it's gonna look weird like if you're looking at that like oh well maybe i do this and then this and then this and then i do this on monday this on tuesday and it's like no no you just do everything you can in one day like, like <laughs> yeah it's not hard <laughs> like, it's not hard to understand but it's, it's like i don't i kind of like did just did a short reply like oh uh, yeah just maybe just learn some language learning theory or something before you like start because mm. i found watching other people even if they don't say what i want to hear or you're like what i care about or, like you still have to listen to what they're saying you know like yeah if you don't like the way that luca lampiero does his thing yeah like it doesn't matter because you can still learn some stuff like he literally learns from reading and you can take that and go like oh okay so reading must be good like you don't have to take the minute details but you should look at like the bigger picture so like oh fuck there we go 
Anyway, so, <laughs> so they, so like, it's like Steve Kaufman. He does like ninety nine percent reading and like some listening. And you should literally look at what he's doing. Being like, okay, yeah, so reading and listening work. Okay, and then you go to your next person, and you go to your next person, and it's just you just get there eventually. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there are common threads between most of them, and it's like what you find and you find out with with some people who have certain strengths you know who did a lot of study and then they go okay well my listening is really bad and i struggle with that and then you go okay well they focus on these and these and these and they got good at this but their listening was bad and other people were like well you know yeah, listening yeah, yeah. i can i can listen better than i can read and so you you really are able to pick out like what all of each person is kind of missing out or what they feel like is missing in their learning and what they feel like worked and what you end up with is pretty much it's it's all almost the same between all of the best people who learn you know it's just yeah but the basic things are all the same and yeah all the same. But yeah it's just the ways but yeah but anyway as i was saying about um matt's discord like the people ask some really specific questions on like like just stupidly specific, and no one's got an answer to these things <laughs> oh, oh like if i listen for half an hour and then i read the exact same thing like 20 minutes later and then i go back to the reading and then like what yeah like, some people to space, like what? some people really want to make this complicated it seems like they want to complicate their lives so much and they're and there's also their worries they're so worried about making one wrong move yeah uh, they like, would rather do like nothing like, then failing isn't it? yeah it's like, they don't want to fail or like mistake the thing is it's going to take so long especially to like learn <laughs> korean or japanese or something. it's going to take so long it doesn't even matter what you do like you could be like this like if you look at me and giga we're both like two years in like pretty much and our vocabulary is like we both have a decent amount of vocabulary but it's just completely different yeah like completely different because it's just such a large language like there's so many words it's like actually ridiculous like if you took 100 people who were two years in it's just not long enough to know enough like you wouldn't you, the, you no one would even have any crossover you can have someone that just plays games and then someone who just reads the news and they've not even seen each other's words like ever yeah it's actually crazy uh late key says yeah you can't really fail in a continuous process i definitely agree with that you're gonna eventually get there uh, and then damn fine g says failure is key too it's such a waste of time to ask so many questions and I, yeah, I, thing, yeah, yeah, I fully believe that if you, if you just try something and see what happens, you're going to know, you're going to know for yourself, you're going to develop that confidence so that you don't actually have to rely on asking these questions. You'll build your own confidence in what you're doing um, because you, because you just know that it works or you know that it, it didn't work that time and you just help building, um, it yeah, helps you just it's build just your own process. Around trial and error but the thing is some people don't have that brain you know like they just have a different mindset and yeah it's like they don't they don't think like oh I'll just do it and see what happens they just kind of um i don't know they just want they, it's like i don't know if they i don't know if it's something to do with like the way they've grown up like they're just guided on everything like okay do this and do this and do this and then they just do it that and then they get success so they think they need to ask people to get success like that's it's, the brain is so like complicated it's unreal man like, yeah just, just way too complicated I think that's part of it. I think there's some hand holding going on, but then also uh, some people who uh, they want things to be 100% perfect uh, the first time, and 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 they don't know what the outcome is if they just go without us without a path, you know, following you. Uh, one tree chill. Hey, dude, thanks for subscribing. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Spicy. Um. And then, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, the, the, yeah, they, they, they don't know what will happen. So they won't act, you know, it's like, because they yeah, don't yeah. have a clear idea of what's going to happen. They're going to do nothing when they could just like, could just, uh, try it and then find out what happens. And then they'll, you know, that's experiential. So. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think there's another part as well. They 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 don't know how insignificant the things they're worrying about are. Like they don't yeah. don't know. Like you don't know how insignificant it is to care about flipping topic markers and subject markers. It's so insignificant to like yeah. even think about. Like there is no point thinking about it because it's just something you can't learn. Like if someone comes into English, like how do I learn ah uh, and an and the like the, like what uh, like I don't know how to use it. I just know exactly how to use it without even trying. You know, like it's just there every single word. And like you can tell them when it sounds weird and when it doesn't but you can't actually explain 
how um yeah it's it's one of those things i mean speaking of topic marketers and subject markers and that kind of stuff it's funny you know you it's one of the things you learn at the beginning so people get so caught up on it because it's a yeah. because we don't have them in english they they want to perfect it right away they want to get it all perfect and learn it without knowing anything else about the language and yeah i think that's a, that's a big problem as well is people don't like if you've never heard the language and they're trying to learn the pronunciation of never they're trying to trying to even even learn hangul yet and it's like you've never seen words like you don't even you've never even heard words and you want to learn <laughs> The, the writing system and yeah. you never heard the sounds yeah like, exactly. just never, it's never gonna work it's like it's never ever gonna work i've definitely uh brought this up with other people where you have to you have to kind of it the, and one of the reasons i think that the this sort of scattershot grammar approach works you know where you just learn a lot of grammar in a short period of time and then you go for a review very quickly and just do a lot again it's like you get yeah, a yeah. you get a wide view you're able to I use the analogy, it's like sketching out a picture before you draw the final draft, you know? You just take your yeah. your pencil and you just start sketching out, you start blocking out the forms, you, you know, use basic shapes, cylinders, triangles, squares and stuff, you you, you just block out everything and you get a, pic, a basic picture of how it's going to look. Then you go back and fill in the details and start, you know, doing refining and stuff. But it's, if you try to focus, if you start a picture and try to focus taking one, the very beginning, uh, say you start with somebody's head and you try to bring that to completion and then go to the next part and draw their torso and bring that to the final state, it's it's not going to work. And I feel like language learning is the same way. You got to get the yeah, wide yeah, picture. Yeah. yeah, I think as well. Oh, shit, what was I going to say? Well, I lost that. Oh, anyway, that's it, that's it, that's it. So, um, <laughs> a lot of the grammar, a lot of the the meaning in the grammar is behind the white said. It's no, no. It, that's that's really important, like to understanding it as well. Not just like, like if you just read it all the time and you don't know how to say it, you've never heard it. It's impossible to pick it up. Like impossible. You can know the meaning, but when someone says it, you start feeling it. Yeah, yeah, and I think, um, I think also. Yeah, it, it, I was I was learning grammar, you know, as, as I started out learning Korean, I was learning some basics, and it was it was kind of tough. But then I started doing, you know, after a couple of months of doing that, month and a half, I started doing this mass immersion thing, and started hearing this stuff over and over again. And then I would go back to this beginning stuff, looked at it again, and I was like, oh yeah, well I heard this character say it in this situation, um, you know, on in this particular way. And it's it's just my understanding then yeah, that, switched that from going from to books to to you know shows or like situations to being like situations and then having a name for it. So yeah, yeah exactly. It just helped it stick exactly. much more. So I definitely list lots of listening and immersion is it's awesome. Uh, visor uh, visor says kind of like how Anki reps have been described as putting a listing of that word in your head to be filled out with immersion scattershot grammar puts that awareness there for when you come across it seems similar to me yeah it goes that way and the opposite way of like you mm. you just put you create a little little entry there a blank entry in your notes essentially it can work the other way around like you can know like a noise like blah, 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 and then blah, blah, blah. Well, you don't know what that means but you hear it so many times you can like oh blah, blah, blah. and then you see it and you're like oh that's that's what it is ah, yeah and then it's just the thing is if you do everything if you do reading and you do listening it just connects together like perfectly on like and that's just the way to go really you know what i mean yeah yeah so uh to kind of put in a clear way um your if you had to if you had to block out like the basic approach to learning korean for you uh what does that look like you know as far as like doing some grammar and then uh some vocab and some reading and some listening I would this is so this is how my day is pretty much structured how I would start. So if I told someone to start, I would say just start with like grammar. Like you don't need to read like read read straight away, but I would say like start with doing some grammar a day. Like just, especially talk to me in Korean. It's so simple. Like it's just it's too simple to not like it, the first one is literally like, how to say hello, how to say goodbye, how to like like three point. You can go through that in like a day. Like the whole thing. Yeah. Like at least 
you like you can get most of the way at least to like level three in like a couple of hours and then you like you've got all that like a uh, what's it called it's just like data you know what i mean like you've got the data there and then what you do for the rest of the day is you just watch something and you can watch with english subtitles or something as long as you like you have the mindset of like okay i'm watching and i'm listening and i'm, I'm just reading the subtitles to understand because you can hear through the subtitles it is possible yeah like maybe some people some people like focus too much or like their brain doesn't let them listen and read at the same time but even even when i'm watching other shows like spanish shows and german shows and stuff i still pick up words because it's just so obvious like what they're saying especially with the subtitles there like i don't know it just it's not really difficult you know like you just get input so you do some grammar and then you do some listening and watching for the rest of your day. Mm -hmm. And then as you go, you can just add like reading, like especially when Giga showed me the Yonsei reading, I was like, wow, that's just ridiculous. Like how easy it was compared to what I had to like, I was looking around for everything, but I didn't think university textbooks would be helpful. Cause yeah. I was like, I was seeing people's videos. Like, oh yeah. Oh no, no, you shouldn't use this and you shouldn't use that. And then I looked at it and I was like, you know, this is so easy. And with no graded reader, it just helps. Like if there was a graded reader and it was uh, like uh, much better, I would probably say use that. But this is like the closest thing you've got to a graded reader. Yeah. And the only problem is, is that it costs money technically. Yeah. And I know yeah. some other people have used this book. Um, I've actually got that book. Someone sent it me. It's backwards, I think, mirrored, but. I don't know. I'll, I'll send my mirrored version as a. But yeah, I've got that book, but I've never actually used it. And the one thing I hate is that it used um was it using the romanization at the start? Um oh, no, some... it wasn't even. That was a different book. Yeah, so this one doesn't actually use the romanization, which that's why I bought it, actually. I saw it in the bookstore. And the the vocabulary uses romanization. Um but yeah, that's, yeah, that that's easy to look well. over. I, I, it didn't make any sense why they, why they did that when they were expecting you to read it anyway. Yeah, it's kind of like, weird. I'm trying to weird. fill out words, I'm trying to fill out the page or something. Yeah. Just fill something up. Um, and they're in bold too. It's like the romanization is in bold on the page. It's ridiculous. Yeah, like, yeah but make any it's sense. pretty good. It's pretty good stories. Um, they're pretty simple, but also some people can't stand folk, you know, folk stories. Yeah. Um, I agree. I tried to use the um, talk to me in Korean ones, and I think uh, I bought it for like, I think it was like two dollars fifty on sale or something. And there was it's quite a few actually. It's like ten or something. Like, it's quite good, but it's just like you get two through two, and it's like oh, I can't be bothered anyway. Yeah, they've got audio as well. It's pretty cool, but I don't know. Man. I think interest is such a like a big boost. But then the Yonsei reading is so easy that you don't need interest, and it's just, it's just to get you to things that you you want to find interesting. Like, if you have that mindset that it's going to get me to what I want to read. Yep. Then it's pretty good, you know, like yeah. you just need the mindset and everything is about mindset. Yeah, for me it's, it's like crazy. that's actually why um you know, some people have said, "Oh man, I can't stand watching these like high school uh drama like romance yeah, dramas." Me, <laughs> and, <laughs> and for me, so for me, it's just like uh I don't know, it's really easy Korean and I'm learning a lot of words, so it's it's I'm making it fun, I'm making it interesting, but uh, yeah, I think even if you didn't like it, but it was easy, easy enough that you could understand it and learn words, you just use it as a stepping stone like, yeah. to get to what you want to watch. It felt like really yeah. good. It was like, oh, wow, I'm actually learning words. I'm actually recognizing a lot of words. Yeah. And so it's going to help me get to the point where I can watch some stuff that I would, you know, some stuff that I might actually would watch in English. I wouldn't watch yeah, yeah, exactly. high school. I wouldn't watch Degrassi, you know. Well, if you were watching the dramas before, then technically you were watching that in English, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, <laughs> doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, some grammar study and then uh, and then immersion and reading. Yeah, and then and then yeah, I would I would add reading a little bit. Like at first, I would use the Anki deck. You know, the five hundred words one that I made. Mm -hmm. I made that from the Talk to Me in Korean book. That one it just has so many like words that will like hundred percent come up like all yeah. the time. That was like, even things like clipping soap that comes up so much yeah you, you don't even know like you don't even know until you start getting into it yeah i bought that book um as i was 
uh, as I was learning uh, Korean in the first month or so, about a month in, I realized like, you know, what? I'm learning a little bit of grammar, but I don't know any words. Cause then I watched this video. It's, it's funny. It was actually uh, Xiaoma NYC. He watched, I watched a video of him trying to like learn Spanish by just memorizing like a thousand no, uh, you know you, three thousand you know, vocab words <laughs> you could do that with spanish you know like yeah it's not, because the words are so similar like and then in like a specific order it's so you could actually learn a decent amount just by doing that yeah it's crazy. so it, it was a funny video it's kind of clickbait but also like he, i mean not entirely clickbait because he was he was trying, he was giving it a genuine, yeah, honest like, try. That, you know? like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, but that's where I learned about what Anki was and realized like, oh yeah, I've got to learn, I've got to learn my vocabulary, my vocabulary. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was, so it was like, uh, it was just really, that got me into like realizing that I needed to learn. So and then I looked around and I bought that 500 Korean words from Talk To Me in Korean. And I think, um, I think the the words in it are good, and then the way they present it in a story, as like a short paragraph. Yeah, that, that was one of the best parts about it. But I couldn't put that into Anki without it yeah. being weird. Like yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't fit into Anki because it's too long. It's just too much information. But if you actually want to buy the book, you, it has a really good like. Everyone has a story, so it has like how many fifty stories or something. Yeah, and then also like fifty days. Each word that you learn has uh like set phrases that are used together yeah, 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 um, that are based on that word um, so, to give you an idea so you can continue to use it as a reference even later I think you can look back and like browse yeah, through things and and I learn like that. yeah the set phrases with the set phrases, you can find them. If you go onto like uh, KR Dict or Naver or something, like it tells you all the basic things that it uses with like, if a word, it'll tell you if a word, like what it's followed by and like what particles it uses as well. And it gives you those examples. So you can always look at that as well, you know, like I think a lot of people don't even like think about that. But it's, it's a lot easier to learn words with yeah. another word. And yeah. I was, I, that actually happened to me today. And I was like, oh, that goes with that. Yes, yeah, nice. Nice, yeah. I see. I think it's actually tough at first um, when you're first learning, like when you know only maybe a hundred words. Yeah, when you know like five <laughs> words. <yeah>. Because because <laughs> you're because learning. I do think that learning more than one word at a time does make it harder um, when it's a new language, especially like a new new writing system, new phonetic system. It's hard yeah. to learn two words at once. Yeah, I think. But the, I think you know, it's just. Is when when you're at the start, you just jam your head full of words. Like it doesn't matter if some of them fall out, some of them fall out. Ninety percent of them fall out. It's okay. But you're just gonna see them again the next day anyway, and you just kind of keep seeing it. And that's basically like how I've been going about like learning the whole thing. Really, I just yeah. just go, you know, just go. I'm just going like every day. I'm just going and going and going. And then a lot of words fall out, and then you get some, and then that's that's all it's about, really. Yeah, I mean, it's really one of those things where if you like in your case, you try to you write down and you get a lot of you focus your attention on a lot of different words. And then in the end, the the most uh, maybe important ones or the most frequent ones or just, you know, some of them. No, it no, just... It's the one where you get the perfect sentence and you just like, yeah, that's it's never going anywhere now. It's yeah, you just get it's just you just need that one thing. It's like it's once you understand the word, when you understand what it's trying to say, there is like a 50% chance you 100% remember that forever now. Yeah. Like, and then you just got to keep doing it. It's like, I like the idea of just reading a lot because you cover more words than, and you just cover so many like different phrases and different like ways of saying things that it's, it just makes it easier. Uh, Late Key, thank you so much for subscribing. That is very cool of you. Thank you. Rack racking up the subscribers today. I really appreciate it. Um, I, and then just people being here uh, and checking out the conversation, uh, people being here to listen to what uh, Retro has to say. It's all very appreciated and very cool. So I'm glad you guys are here. Yeah, it's great. Teddy says, uh, don't tease me with the chew sub alert. <laughs> uh, any any uh, Luna standards in chat? But do you, you know, you know, like the word stan and stuff. Yeah, I, I like even though I've been like doing Korean stuff for ages, I didn't even know what it was until like maybe like three months ago. And someone was like telling me, "Oh, should have stan Luna." I was like, "What are you talking about? Like, like what is that?" And they're like, oh, no, it's like a K-pop thing. I'm like, "What?" <laughs> like, you don't see anything if it stays in like this English sphere, you know? Like, it's just in the English sphere. 
it doesn't really no, it's not really a thing if you don't immerse in that content you don't see exactly dude so it's funny i got into k-pop um so i was playing osu and uh I, I was following somebody on Twitter that, you know, posted like a video of them playing Osu. And I was like, you know, I've heard about this game. This actually looks like right up my alley. So I started playing that a lot. Found a K-pop song. I found Red Velvet's Bad Boy and yeah. and saw the music video. And, you know, I was just like, holy shit, you know, this is, this is fucking awesome. I got really into K-pop and was listening to it a lot. And it wasn't until months down the road. We're talking like nine months later. I actually looked into like people who like other K-pop fans, <laughs> and yeah. so I was a, I was blissfully ignorant of the whole K-pop fandom. I had no idea that it existed. Yeah, I was, good, <laughs> it was it was awesome, <laughs> and then I realized that like uh, oh, like there are some great people. Uh, I know some great people who like K-pop as well, and I personally know people you know who like K-pop, and there's. I have some more, you know, online friends and stuff who are into it, but the K-pop, like, Twitter fandom and, like, all of that, yeah. it's just crazy. Oh. It's kind of, it's kind of nuts. It's too, much. It's, it's, it's too, too, I don't know, it's like a cult in it, like, you know, yep. I mean? it's just too much on the way, too much, too, too difficult for me. Well, I, it, the weirdest thing that gets me is they're so into it, but they don't have any, like, they don't want to learn Korean or nothing. It's like, they just live their lives and, like, it's all in English. And then the, all the all the news that they read is in English, so it doesn't. Yeah. It might not even be right. Like yeah, it could be just mistranslated, or even uh, in fact, that's probably happened like a thousand times. Oh yeah, where something's been mistranslated, and then like they've just gone it like, oh yeah, fuck this guy. Like, yeah, I, I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen that happen a ton of times. It's just like, you know, people like thinking that somebody said something that was like really nasty to somebody else, or thinking that they were disparaging their company or whatever, and so then everybody riles each other up based on a shitty English translation uh, then it's translated <laughs> like it's like Google translated into like 40 different languages and that you know they gather an army like, of it's Twitter gone, people it's gone, like, <laughs> it's gone through like Turkish and Swedish and come back through to English and everyone's like yeah man I hate this guy now what the fuck <laughs> yeah well, then. yeah it's crazy yeah, it's much better to just learn yeah, the language right <laughs> I can't believe how like popular K-dramas are now you know like I just couldn't believe. I can't yeah. believe there's like a whole subreddit of like hundreds of thousands of people in it, like watching K-pop every single day, and like a, a lot of them are really into it as well. Yeah, like they watch all the new ones that come out, and they just don't. They don't care for the language. It's like, okay, that's cool, but what are you doing? My at my last job, I uh, I told one of my coworkers that I was learning Korean, and I she asked me to say something in Korean, so I said a couple of phrases that I knew, and she was like, mm, "No, you d that's." You gotta, <laughs> you gotta sound angrier than that. I was like, angrier? What? Like, yeah, Korea, to me, no. Korean is like totally chill language and like really, you know, soft sounds. And she's like, my, my son watches these K dramas all the time, and so I know. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, what you're hearing, yeah. they're probably actually angry. You're probably hearing yeah, angry I'm, Koreans. I'm <laughs> that's it. That's it. People, t people like to take things like the first thing they hear as well, isn't it? It's like. Like they yeah. see one thing, like oh, oh, this Japanese guy did this. I hate Japanese people, and they're like, yeah. You don't know, you don't even know Japanese. Well, you never seen a Japanese person. You didn't even know what Japan was till two day, two seconds ago. You know, like what are you yeah. talking about? Or like, oh, K-pop. I've seen gang, uh, uh, you know, Gangnam Style. <laughs> yeah, so. oh, I, di I didn't even know. Like there was a lot of things I didn't even I didn't even know like what even Korea was man, until like maybe Bubble Pop on the League of Legends thing. You know, like that was the first. Uh even thing on it actually my friend told me about k-pop in 2009 because he was like listening to g or something i was like he just oh listen, listen to this song i was like yes yeah, it's, it's okay but like it's just pop in it it's just pop like it's not exactly anything it's not different in any way it's just the same as what we have but in korean yeah i do think that there is a there's a a nice flavor that it has and i also think that korean pop music is more adventurous than uh english pop music or other western pop music um yeah maybe maybe I don't, I don't know but i haven't listened to so many english songs that it's like if a song's come out in like the past five years i probably haven't even heard it like yeah unless i listen to the radio at a specific point and i've heard it like that's the only time i even come across because i was literally just not doing anything like just doing what i was doing and playing the games i wanted to play and like just on youtube and like no listening to um 
What's it called? <laughs> like, I didn't listen to the radio or anything. Um, it's easy to get caught up in a bubble in like today's today's world, in the, the world of technology. It is. Uh, speaking of uh, getting caught up in Korean, um, are you, have you, what is your experience with dreaming in Korean? Do you ever, do you ever dreaming. have dreaming Korean dreams? I was curious. I don't know, you know, I, I think I have thoughts, but it's like, it's kind of like so, like used to it that I don't even realize. It's, it's like when I'm reading the book now, I can, now that I've got enough, like, uh, words and stuff and vocabulary, I can imagine what's happening. But it, 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 I know, I know for a fact that I'm missing certain things. Like there'll be like a word, and I, if I don't know what it means, I just okay, hold like go, I'm gone. Next word. But it's like I might be missing something. Like, but you can imagine like what things look like and what they do, and that's all in Korean. Like I'm not imagining anything. It's like how Matt says, like the mentalese thing. It's like yeah, that's pretty much the same as dreams. Like you, could, I can be talking to someone in a dream, and I won't even realize what language, it, what language it is. You know, like you just know what happened. That's it. But it's, I suppose it's kind of hard because I don't, I don't, I don't remember my dreams, you know. Like I, oh, if I okay. dream, I don't remember it at all. So it's, it's kind of a hard thing to say. Uh, Teddy, Teddy, thank you so much for subscribing. That's incredible. Uh, thank you so much for the support and for just being here. <laughs> I can't not sub for the wave. I got you, bro. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, Nervous says, I was watching a live stream of a Korean independent artist. He was talking about how he was tired canceling his concerts and music videos shooting because of the coronavirus. A lot of international fans would openly say, I don't understand what you're saying, but you're beautiful. Makes me a little <laughs> makes me a little <laughs> sad so for the artist. The fact that people don't care about what he's actually trying to express. Yeah, I kind of know what you mean. It, he probably can't read what they're saying either, so. <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't even matter. Just thanks for the comment. <laughs> so um what made me think about the about asking you about dreams and stuff it, it is a good point you know it's like and dreams are like so dreams will get like weird fast like it'll be like a blend yeah, of you, you some weird dreams you like. can have like somebody in your brain like you can be dreaming about somebody you know it's a, a person but they look different they look like somebody else you know and it's like just weird stuff yeah but dream about things that have like happened in something i've watched and it's just like yeah but, and it's all in korean and it's like okay <laughs> like uh, but it's, it's like it's like your brain's just replaying what it's seen earlier it's like it's not it's not like a new thing or nothing so but, and then somebody else will be involved so two nights ago i had a dream where i was speaking korean and for me yeah. for me i don't actually speak much korean i don't i don't speak a lot which yeah, maybe we'll get to in a moment either, yeah yeah so it was funny though like <laughs> the dream version of me was uh was uh almost joking i think in, in the dream i was like joking with somebody that i, I spoke korean so i started like that it, i was responding to somebody and i said something like mm kronika uh kre krom kronde uh kugo <laughs> so i started just launching down all of these yeah uh yun you know i just started going like over and over again and i just like woke up and thought that was like the funniest thing ever <laughs> like, yeah. at least it shows that your brain is like taking something in you know like <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah, you, so you don't actually, uh, I was going to ask you about that. I was going to, you know, ask you how much yeah. exactly do you speak Korean? How much do you practice? I don't, I never, never practice except maybe just reading the book, like just reading the book out loud. And it, it's quite good, but it, the problem is, is it slows you down like a lot. Not too much, but like it, it slows you down. But I think it's definitely a confidence thing, you know, like, if I was to get my comment, like the reason I'm not good at speaking at the moment is because I need to break this confidence barrier of like getting some basic phrases and then you, you just have the confidence. Like if you look at a lot of the people who talk on YouTube, like Lindy and um, Sean Pablo and stuff, they have like these set phrases that they say all the time, just the same thing. And like they just rely on that. And if you want to speak, you can speak from as early as you want, but you just need to develop some set phrases and you just use them over and over again and people are like, oh yeah, yeah you're, you're really good yeah yeah and then get all the comments that you need you know like but that's how we speak anything like in english how many times do you ever like think like oh i'm saying that a lot you know like i just keep saying that a lot 
I need to change what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> right. But when you, the thing is, when you're speaking a foreign language, it's hard to look at that because you're just seeing, like, you don't, you don't know all the options. Whereas in English, we can say like, oh, I'll say it different next time. I'll say this because you've got all the options, and that's the point of getting the immersion is to get all the options. And then you start outputting, and then you think, oh, oh, there's a different way to say that. I know there is. Mm -hmm. And then you can ask someone or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think building from those chunks, uh, like Kral had said, set phrases are just chunks. Yeah, you you have like different chunks that you can rely on and branch out from there. And and yeah, exactly, you can get the same sentence and just change the one. Whoops! I think we lost. We lost him. Uh, Duck, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Chaos Wizard, I I, I see I saw you in the chat, but I uh, um, I didn't uh, I didn't want to interrupt. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, passerby, thank you for following Can Passerby. Are we in the right spot? I've seen uh, the light on. I don't know how bad that's gonna be all good. I think we're worse. good. I think we're good. No, I don't know. Look at that. What's that, bro? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. How's this? Might be a little bit bright. Yes. Yeah, that, really bright. Uh, that, that, that bright? works. That's oh, good. Does this flip? Well, it's kind of moving oh, around. Yeah. We're like going on a yeah, roller coaster yeah. ride. <laughs> Is that better? Am I still in the middle? I can move backwards. Yeah, we're good. How's that? Yeah, Is that yeah. Good? And I can I'm also, I can, I can actually manually move you too if I need to. Oh, can you? Oh, that's alright. Uh. Good. Let's see here. Who else? Uh, Ducking No. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, lots of lots of people. Sorry, I haven't been acknowledging everybody in chat today. I know when I get in a conversation, I like to give most of my attention, you know, to uh, somebody who it's hard, it's on hard the call. To read the chat and like interrupt what someone's saying. So, oh, well, this person said this. Exactly. And like, oh, but I am okay. reading all of your comments. I promise you guys, I'm reading everything in chat. Um, and I know you guys are there, so I really appreciate you guys being here and being here for this conversation. Um, Ajing says, Cloudy, notice me, senpai. I, I always notice Ajing. Did I, Damn. Ajing, did I tell you I was in your stream for like five minutes last night before I went to bed? <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, dreaming or something. I don't know. Talking about, no, we were talking about speaking. I oh, yeah, like speaking. Speaking just. But yeah, speaking, I don't know, man. I, I don't care about speaking enough at the moment, you know? Like, yeah. I would have gone there. The thing is, if I if I output, I, I can, like, I've, what I've started doing is thinking about stuff, or like thinking about saying stuff, like, while I'm doing it and, like, doing it. And it's actually easier than what you would think, like, after a while. Like, there's just so many, like, simple things that you can say. Like you just kind of get used to it. Yeah. But I wouldn't, I, I would probably be able to speak if I went there. It's like a confidence thing. Like once you get the confidence, like what you're going to say is correct. That's when you go, oh yeah, yeah. And this is output is what makes me think, oh, I should have learned Italian first. Like just to get that, that confidence of outputting. Like if you're a single language speaker, like just one language your whole life, it's hard to start speaking another language without feeling weird. For sure. Yeah. And, and then, you know the last guy that Matt, Matt interviewed? So he has spoken like Arabic and English his whole life. You know, well, not his whole life, but you know, like he's been brought up with two languages. So it's less weird to be speaking another language because he's already used to communicating in two different like languages. So yeah. I think that if you're a single, if you only speak one language, it, there is like a confidence effect there, like a, a barrier that you need to you need to break through that barrier by getting on the chats. And it's the only way to do it as well. And but I'll do it later, I think. I think there's a two there's two aspects to fluency, obviously. First of all, you have to know what words you're gonna say, you have to know uh what uh yeah, that, that's, what that's grammar them, that's the confidence thing as well. Like you, you have to know that what you're gonna say is correct. And yeah. you need that, that um that feedback. And then also there's the uh the practice. And and I think practicing speaking and everything is uh, is one aspect of becoming fluent in, in in speaking the language, but it doesn't address the knowing what to say part. 
Um, and because yeah. there's a difference between being able to being able to speak See, forever can... in English, but it sounds like garbage, yeah. you know. Not even that. Like it, even in any language, like being fluent is such a a bad determiner because it, it literally just means that you can talk. Yeah. A lot. You, there, there's many people who have the, the smallest vocabulary, even in English, and just they can just waffle on all day. You know, like they're just speaking for like five hours, and it's like, wow, yeah, it's impressive. But you have to learn from these people. <laughs> yeah. You actually, you have to look at them like, man, this guy just doesn't care. You know, like he just does not care. Yeah. And you, you got to copy what they're doing. Just like, yeah, okay, I'll just that's it. But it's hard because everyone has that that personality. Like, oh, I don't want to say it unless it's perfect. Like, oh, yeah. I'm not saying it unless it's perfect. Yeah, and so for me, it's also like um, I don't really have a reason. I don't have I don't have any reason to output. I yeah, that's that is my reason as a yeah. I don't. I'm not planning on going to Korea anytime soon. Um, at the very least, it might be in about a year and a half. Um, you know, maybe spring of 2022. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, man. Yeah, man. Uh, well, it's you know, you distant know, future. Know, it's like, for me, I just want. I don't understand enough. For me to be like if i understood everything like if i was like a heritage speaker or something but i didn't know how to speak that to me that sounds like the most easy string of it like you know you can talk the language and you can hear the language you can hear everything you can understand everything all you gotta do is we'll learn some words okay i just need to learn some words that's cool and then you can by doing by reading you can just pick up so many words so quick yeah like that's the thing but yeah uh it is, like Carl had said uh, in chat, it is all a balancing act. I think you got to do a bit of both. You got to make sure that you're studying and learning and internalizing and uh, figuring out what uh, what you should say in a given situation. And then also, uh, if you know, if you want to communicate with people, you also have to practice uh, actually speaking. Yeah. The thing is, if you do, if you don't want to do speak, if you don't want to output, you don't have to. Like there is, there should be no pressure on outputting because it's. It's not even necessary. If you just wanted to read manga in Japanese, you only need to learn Japanese to read. Like, it doesn't matter. Who, what does it matter if you can understand some old guy? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't even matter at all. Yeah. Like, you should also fo you should focus on what you want to do mainly. But then, if you yeah. want to be good, if you want to get that mentality that I'm just gonna, I want to understand everything. Oops. Oh, you guys are gonna see behind the curtain. We lost you. We lost me. Um, yeah, man. We've had some technical yeah, difficulties yeah. today. That's the second time that Discord has actually just straight up crashed on me. Is that what's happening? Uh, are you on the video? I'm on the video uh, now. I mean, yeah. Come in. Come in. <laughs> I have to end it. You know, like I have to leave and join back because it's like. I'm like stuck in purgatory or something. Yeah, same here. So like, if, I, if I just wait, like, yeah, that's what's happening. I don't know why. You left to you left to boost up the Discord. <laughs> right. Boost it up to full. Yeah. Full, yeah. Everything's 1080p. Nice. Um. Actually, that's that's a good point. Maybe I should boost this. <laughs> no, uh, not yet. Not yet. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> wait. Wait a bit. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm boosting totally. somebody else's Discord. I can't remember. Oh, I'm boosting the MIA Ooh, Korean yeah, Discord. Yeah, that was a that was a long time ago. You know, that was like yeah. a few months ago. Yeah. Um. It's crazy. Uh, Nervous says Nervous says you two are doing great. Thanks, Nerva. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Man. By the way, Thanks. anybody, uh, anybody who loves Korean music, definitely go uh, to follow and subscribe uh, to. Nerva's room. Um, absolutely, you should. She shares a lot of indie Korean artists and is super, super great at that. She's really great at bringing you like a nice curated selection of really high quality underground Korean music. So definitely Man, check her out. I, on that subject of music, you know when you have the YouTube playlists? So you think, oh yeah, oh, okay, I'm just gonna stick this song on it. It's got all the music. And then after a while, it, even if it's an unrelated song, if you've listened to that song before, it just sticks in that playlist, like, yeah, here you go. You can listen to some 70s song and it'll give you like, fucking some black pink or something you're like, yeah, this is this is not even related. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> are you getting this from? Um, yeah, do you, so do you use YouTube a lot for immer immersion and stuff? So you, you basically have just, you don't, don't do the have time to do it, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there's there's a couple channels. There's one channel 
um it's basically like just weird questions like 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 oh why why do we feel tired when we wake up and stuff like that and it's such a good channel and it's like i don't even have time to do that because i'm literally just doing other stuff all the time like there might be a point where i'm gonna finish watching like the sitcoms and whatever i'm just gonna be like okay i'm just gonna do this now i'm just gonna watch this guy's youtube channels like all of them because there's like a hundred videos or something you could just go through all of them like one by one so, and he, he's actually released a book so i think when i go to korea i'm gonna buy that book mm. yeah one sec i'll get it up so everyone can see yeah cool yeah drop a link he, he, he's called a uh, samuel gungi or something like that and so if i just google that he's like 100 percent helpful Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Um, you know, I was curious. Uh, we were talking about like uh, learning from other people in the community and learning from other learners and seeing what they do that's good and well, you know, that works. I was curious what your thoughts are uh, as far as predictions um, based on the. So, based on my view of how the language learning communities have shifted recently. Like, you know, the Matt vs. Japan thing, uh, the MIA stuff has kind of blown up recently. And I've been noticing a lot of people in forums and things um, making immersion tools and, you know, stuff based on crash and theories and stuff. That's all, it seems to be kind of at like a, a, a you know, a popping a point. Peak, uh, like, yeah, like, like it's about to like ex seep out and like, you know blow up do you yeah, think in like a in like a year right. yeah what do you think like do you you know based on <sighs> your thoughts do you think that's gonna people are gonna be talking about you know immersive immersive theories and building more tools for that and stuff mm, possibly like i don't know the thing is anything can happen you know like it, it's hard to predict anything like like it, especially with yoga's thing if he continues to make all these apps and everything and like the, the problem is i don't really use the apps for like anki and all the browser apps and everything like it's just too it's too much you know like I, i'm just like a simple a simple guy i got my ebook reader yeah and then i've got i've literally got nothing all i have is like vlc to play stuff that i've downloaded that's it <laughs> right like and then the the ebook app and youtube and like if it doesn't have subtitles or something like that i just watch you know like it, does, it doesn't really bother me and like, yeah. I don't, what apps can you possibly make that will just make it easier like there's nothing i can think of other than maybe the you know how the MIA dictionary has the stars yes on the on the thing that is so good for like choosing the words you want to learn like before nowadays i just write down all the words in the book it, like if it doesn't have a picture like when i was doing sentences like do my own i would look if the word was like uh you know um chaos dict has like two stars and three stars if it wasn't in the one star category i just wouldn't even bother yeah because you don't know how rare that word is you know like there's no point learning a word or even trying to like brute force it in if you, you're only going to see it like once like, yeah there's no point it's like it's, it, it makes the thing is when you get more words it becomes easier then to get the less common words and the less common words and you just keep going like that basically i think i fully agree with that yeah that's one of the that's one of the reasons that's actually one of the only um add-ons i have for anki um i also have the 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 low um low-key Anki stuff and that's probably ultimately less important than um yeah well it's it's, it's, it's just, just uh, it's like an optimization thing at that point exactly it's not, it's not a necessity like like having the srs it, it's not even a necessity in itself but it's good and then when you just add in on top of that like the actual base anki is good enough for anyone like you yeah know I mean? it's good enough but then when you start i don't know unless somebody makes personally i was saying someone needs to make a better srs one instead of so instead of someone who makes the add-ons needs to make the SRS with all these functions built in, and then they just update that. They don't need to keep making add-ons and updating add-ons, and it would just make the development easier and everything. Yeah, and I think starting from uh, starting, so I'm pretty sure that the guy who created Anki was learning a language, right? I, I don't know if I'm getting that right. No, but... I don't know. I think because it was bigger in the med med school, like um, it was bigger with like those guys. Like it, way it, before it was used for like language, because everyone was true. using super memo for languages. Uh, Carl said Anki was for Japanese. Yeah, that's what I thought yeah, as well. well. It's not. I'm not sure. The the word is like uh like a Japanese word, isn't it? Yeah. But so Anki, Anki it, is the the Japanese word for memory. And but like, it's basically the same in Korean. You know, like almost the same. Yeah, but the uh the 
med students did use it a lot the med students really kind of t yeah, yeah, ran yeah, with it because it's it turns out it works really well for uh just reinforcing like, stuff rope, like rope that yeah like, yeah um but yeah i think it'll be interesting to see how you know mia and and similar style things pop up and grow in the future but i think i think as far as um tools like I, I know specifically there are people who are trying to create immersion immersion environments using uh using media that's available widely like using viki or using um yeah. netflix or youtube and things like that creating an environment that was like um creating like a like I know there's some. I know somebody who was kind of making their own version of, of like a subs to SRS slash like Morph Man kind of thing, where they could, uh, it would build a list of frequency based on the words that they, based on the shows that they've actually watched. They update a database yeah. from the shows that they've watched, so there's a frequency of words within those shows, so it knows. How many it knows how many times you've seen a word in a show itself so it's like more curated towards your actual learning yeah, yeah, yeah. path you know you know morphman is such a good idea but it just doesn't it's not it's not there you know like somebody needs to that's that's, that's what needs to be so if someone makes an srs that's what it, it just needs to be there automatically like it just yeah that kind of thing where you all the sentences you've got and it just takes all the words you know but it, it needs it's hard to do because it needs to like break down the words, you know, like it needs to be able to pass all yes. the language and like everything. And it, the thing is, it's easy. It's probably easier with like Chinese or Japanese where like, you have separate characters for separate words. Whereas in Korean, there are so many words with the exact same like, like yeah. syllables. And, and it's it, it, with Korean, it really has to have some Korean specific optimization, I think. Uh, because well, yeah, that would that would need to happen for every language, and that's yeah. gonna take a long time, like a long, long time. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's kind of it. So what Rhinus was able to do with Morphman, it works well enough, and I still use it occasionally. Um, yeah. And it it really comes down to you have to kind of pass on a lot of the garbage words because it will fill a lot of it'll mistag things and then uh, fill out some yeah. weird stuff. So. But I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of subs to SRS decks at this point, basically. So um, tons of cards, and as I yeah, push that, as I push that, through uh, the known words, it like it starts to give me better words. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. That's the good thing about it. Is like it curates what you're about to learn, basically. Like you can choose. Okay, I want the next ten words, and it will just give you the next ten words. It, like in yeah. frequency as well as like what you've got in the bank. You know, like it's. It's, it's just good it's like it's good but it just isn't there it just it's not it's not good enough to be everyone using it you know like yeah like if it was up there and it was it was passing everything perfectly and you just had like a huge bank of shows to like put in there it would just be like okay you have to use this like you have to use it. exactly it would be kind of like okay this is pretty pretty great but i see and i have to use um i have to use the program like I, I browse through the cards. I don't just let it give me what's next. I browse through and scroll yeah. through. I, I, may, I might pick a single episode and scroll through the next uh, the next words in that tag until I come across ones that I like. So I'm still, that's still a lot of manual intervention for me. Um, yeah, it, I think it, you want it to be as quick as possible. That's what yeah. it needs to be really. That's one of the reasons why I've stopped using it quite as much. Um, uh, yeah, the yeah. optimization kind of got to a point where it's like, well, I still have to curate it a lot myself. Um, but yeah, you might as well just put the words in yourself at that point, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's basically what, where, what it's at. Um, pixel Parker. Good yeah. to see you. Everyone pixel Parker, uh, edits videos on YouTube and he has a new YouTube channel, uh, that is he started uploading some uh some videos it's called like a sunset we're gonna sh we're yeah we're gonna absolutely shamelessly plug his channel right now that's good because he started doing some uh some oh geez he started doing some reaction videos 
but he's going to be putting yeah. out some other stuff that is not uh, just like K-pop reaction, but also like uh, indie indie stuff. But you guys can help pump up his uh, subscribers. <laughs> I'll probably check that out later. But yeah, it's good good quality stuff. You guys should check it out. He's doing K-pop K-pop stuff just for Cloudy. Yes, he's doing all the K-pop reaction just for me. Yeah, you, know, uh, you should do, you need to do some more comedy videos on like like you can tell <sighs> the effort like the quality was really good one like the quality was good cool yeah dude i appreciate you saying that i would love to i'm basically waiting to be able to afford uh, a camera because i had to borrow a camera to be able to shoot those yeah you said before yeah i borrowed a camera from my boss and like it was nice of him to to let me borrow it but like i i it's i don't really like you know needing i don't i don't know it's like i don't want to like ruin anything i don't want to like be responsible for somebody else's you know expensive yeah, camera that's a, that's a, that's a heavy burden man. yeah so i've just been trying to kind of avoid uh doing that but eventually i would love to um make some more comedy videos and uh some you know just fun light-hearted stuff because i think i think a lot yeah, of yeah. a lot of people get too serious <laughs> yeah man, there's a lot of serious especially now everyone's too serious nowadays uh, Carl says you don't need a good camera to make funny videos. It's true, yeah. But like right now, I just have my webcam. When you've, got, <laughs> I've, like, when you've got the quality. It's good one. But I, yeah, if I had a camera, I could just I could make some videos. But like r right now, I have to shoot stuff like in front of my uh, in front of my computer. So, how's the phone one? My phone one is okay. Uh, hey, my phone camera is amazing. Yeah. I, if I had a camera like yours, I'm sure it'd work out pretty well. Yeah, I think you can just buy any phone nowadays and you get like <laughs> 48 megapixel flipping video, 4K recording. Like, True. Okay, thanks. True. Yeah, it is kind of crazy how the bar has, has risen. Yeah, phones are like the one thing that's just advancing so much. Like, phones will probably be the first thing that has like 8K. Like definitely, like okay, you can buy some cameras, but phones will be the first affordable thing. And people will be like, "Why is there 8K on this phone?" Yeah, on this Look like four inches. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like no one's ever gonna use this. <laughs> I, I had this argument before with um, it was someone at school. This was a long time ago, and it was like a, it was like 1080p on your phone because your phone is so small, you can't even see the difference between 1080p and 720p. Like you just can't see. Yeah, it's just too small to even notice. And I was like, no, 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 you, should, you can, man. It's like, way better. It's like, no, man, you can't. It's hard <laughs> to can't. notice. Yeah, sometimes when I'm watching videos on my phone, I switch between 720p and 1080p, and I know that the resolution is changing, and I'm just like, I can't see it on this, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, it's if it's too small to even, like, notice something. There's some content that you, you can tell if it's really detailed, and especially, like, digital stuff, like, uh, if 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 a game was rendering at a if, at a different resolution, that's one yeah. thing. But like consuming media, it, it's like you can't really tell the difference. If you're watching a video yeah, or like, something, yeah, it just looks the, the same. Only, the, the only thing that like is really off putting anyway, like even if it goes down, is it like when the sound quality changes? That's when it starts getting. That's when it becomes a burden, you know, like a nuisance. Like it's seven twenty p ten eighty p. That's fine. Yeah. When the when the sound stops, like, oh, oh dear, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see here. I'm skipping around my notes to see if I wrote anything down. I didn't actually prepare super hard, but you know, I yeah, I figured fine. I figured we'd uh, have plenty of stuff to just talk to, talk about. Um, this is like our first time talking to. True. That's yeah. Lo loads to do. I say we have to do it again, like. In like another year's time or something, be like, oh, oh so what's changed? What's changed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be like another year ahead, and I'll be like another year ahead. And I'll be like, you output, and you're like, oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. No, I'm thinking another <laughs> three years, or uh, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so I was curious. Oh, actually, go on, sorry. I was, I was uh, gonna get a link for that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was curious. Um, so you've been learning Korean for a while. Do you have any plans for another language? Yeah, yeah, so eventually, whew, at some point, i actually been looking at it at the moment because I was looking at the Italian like resources because I want to learn Italian as well. Mm. But it's like literally, it's just for like personal reasons, you know, like family and stuff. Like there is no reason to learn a language unless you like have like 
something that's worth it in your life, you know, like, I don't know how people can learn, like, Japanese or something, and just be like, bro, it's like, you're gonna dedicate, like, four or five years of your life to, and you don't even know any Japanese people or nothing, it's like, it's, how do you stay motivated in that situation? Yeah. <laughs> like, for me, I already know, I know how I keep myself motivated, and that's literally because I know what I'm gonna do, I know why I'm learning, but if you're just learning for K-pop or Oh, I want to watch K-dramas. Even K, actually, that's pretty good to be honest. If you want to watch K-dramas, it's pretty high bar. So it's like you're still gonna stay in it because you're not gonna understand K-dramas 100% after like three years. It's Maybe true. three years. I'll tell you when I get there. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> it's like I understand quite a lot, but it's like it depends on the subject as well. Yeah. Like e even crime stuff, it's like you, you can understand most of it, but it's like you don't understand the little bits or like if there's just like one sentence you don't understand you just be like oh okay then and then they just they go somewhere you're like oh maybe, maybe that's what they said then and you're just guessing kind of like we when you're just going off audio it's a bit hard to keep up sometimes um so have you have you actually learned any uh italian yet or you just kind of checked it out and kind of looked at did it started a very long time ago like in 2012 I did the Duolingo tree, like the whole tree. I was like, yeah, I'm sick. And I, I was actually <laughs> doing a little, what I, what I used to do was when I wasn't watching, look, I don't know how I figured this out and I was just doing it. But when I wasn't uh, doing Duolingo, like when I was doing stuff, like playing League of Legends or whatever I was doing at the time, I would just have like the Italian news on in the background. Like, yeah, this is gonna, I'm gonna learn all the words with the news now. And I would just have it playing like the 24 hour news, just like playing in the background. And you just hear things, but you don't pick it up until you start actually like reading on studying and like what's going on with the language you know yeah and you can't just solely listen and like it would take you you could but it would take you like five years probably like like think how think about when children start speaking they're like two and a half years old like not just like one years old oh i can speak now because i've got so much input it's like you wait a long time and then when they start outputting they're really bad like really really bad yeah they suck and like that but that's what it's gonna be like for any language really like you're always gonna be bad when you start but yeah i don't know and then with kids it's all about it's, understanding with kids also it's like that's their only it's their only path to understanding it's their only path to connecting yeah, with yeah, other yeah. people not just not just that it's it's actually surprising you think about when there's a child there it's like okay now clippers okay pen like and they get everything just force fed to them and they'll pick up a block and be like oh don't put the block in your mouth and then like that you know what i mean like it just everything is like geared towards like telling the kid what everything is and yeah. like how to do things and like all this and like oh don't do this don't do this don't throw stuff and they don't know what throw is they just did it and then they're like and then they do it again and like stop throwing it and it's like oh, okay and then they just pick me and you don't get that as a language learner you don't have someone saying like oh okay stop doing that <laughs> do this and like just yeah. constantly in the language yeah for sure happen. um yeah i've uh, i've thought I, it's funny you know i've only been learning korean for a few months now basically uh, it feels in some ways it feels like a couple of months and in other ways it feels like nine months it's yeah, it does mine still feels like it's just i don't know where the time goes you know like the time just goes so quick and it's like you can't actually see where you are until you go back and it, i've listened to songs before i even started learning and i've listened like i had songs where i'd listen to them a lot like just because i don't know someone like recommended me the song and i've listened to it i was like yeah this is good man jamming and then you go back to it having not heard it for like the last two years and i go back to it and i was like wow i can understand it like 100 percent. like this is crazy yeah like, i didn't even know what it was before and it's like but the sound is still in your head but it just has meaning that it's so hard to explain but you'll see it soon because there's got to be songs that you haven't listened to for a while. I definitely, I actually, I've been experiencing that lately because I took a huge break from listening to K-pop a lot. Um, and because I listened to it a lot before I started learning. And then once I got into learning, I I focused on speech and stuff. And so now when yeah. I go back and hear these, like I hear a Luna song and I like recognize almost every every line in one of the verses or you know learn i know like most of the words in in a lot of the lines i'm like holy yeah. shit you know it's like it's just we it feels it makes it a different flavor for sure yeah it, it starts having like a feeling rather than but the thing is you still get the exact same feeling in your brain like of the you're just hearing the sound but then it just starts having meaning like it, it's it's such yeah. a hard like thing to especially if somebody's never learned a language it's really hard to explain like how that feels yeah, it's really interesting though, and it's like, 
I think a few months is definitely enough to notice that a little bit. Um, you learn a couple yeah, of definitely. thousand words, a thousand words or so, and it's like, it's uh, it's enough to recognize a lot. Yeah, the thing is, it, it's hard to explain because you, you just keep something. And this is why I wanted to learn something else like Italian first. Yeah. And I think about it probably every single day when, I, when I'm just doing things. Like, <laughs> there is just so many words you have to learn. Yeah. But like, you just, you are, ma you are making progress, but it's so slow. And like, you'll learn words and you'll be like, oh, it has another meaning. Oh, I didn't know this meaning. And you're picking up stuff that you already knew, but just on a different, like on a broader spectrum. And it just keeps, and it goes up so like incrementally slow that it is really hard to see your progress until, like if I watch, you know, so you know how I was watching the sitcoms and stuff like High Kick and whatever. And like I've been basically I've been re-watching them and re-watching them all the way through for like the last two years and every time I go back it's like oh I can understand so much now That's I can cool. understand like most of it like literally most of it and like before I couldn't really pick out the words but now like you would if you go on my Twitter you'll see that I'm posting the clips and stuff sometimes I post clips of like words I already know but it's like it's just in such a good context that it's like oh, I'm just gonna post that on Twitter so other people can see yeah it's, it's like I think that it's worth learning. If I pick that word out now, like really, like uh, not vague. What's what's the opposite of vague? Like clearly, I suppose. Yeah. So it's like it's like really clear to me. Like oh, this word means this, and I'm like maybe other people want that as well. You know, like so I'll just post it on Twitter with the clip and like yeah, everyone can learn that now. In like this specific context. Uh, Ducky, you know, wow, that Luna analogy hits home for me as well, especially the song Colors. That's the co that's the song that was going through my head. That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> I don't even. I don't think I've ever heard that song. <laughs> it's a good song. I've never actually never listened to Luna. You know, I'll listen to it afterwards and I'll, I'll tell Sick. you. But I don't know. My my taste in music it varies so much. Like like I've been listening to like Mamamoo lately, mm -hmm. and then like I would literally listen. I've listened to them like a whole month, just loads of different songs. Put that playlist on, yeah. Put the mix on. Just every single day, just play that. And now I'm on like Nilo, Nilo, and then just listen to like certain songs for like like maybe like 10 songs or something and just on repeat like for like a month at a time and then bang it cut that off and it, it just changes with your mood as well like the different types of songs yeah like, it's kind of crazy but there's so much content out there you can do that um let's see here ben learns words hey how's it going good to see you in here uh does retro take notes or just anki uh it depends what you mean by notes i've got this it's like, I don't know if you can see, but it's like loads of words, like serious amounts of words on the thing. So basically when I'm reading, oh, the camera's here, isn't it? <laughs> so when I'm reading, I highlight the words. And then if there's a word that doesn't have like, um, what's it called? So if I can't picture the word, I'll just write it down. And then I'll write like um, just a, a related word or a word that means exactly the same. So a lot of the time I'll read the description of the, the word and I'll just write like one of the words out of that. Like a lot of the descriptions are just like this and this. And so you just, I just write down whichever one I know, I'll write down. And then I can go back to it later, but I never do. But I just write it down for the sake of writing it down. But then if I can picture it, I'll just add it to Anki. Like it, it, pictures, pictures for nouns in like GIFs, GIFs for verbs. And sometimes you get adjectives, but I don't, I don't know. You can't really tell the difference in Korean a lot of the time. Yeah, I, if, I, if, I don't. If I, feel like, if, I, if I feel like I read the description and then I can picture that myself, I'll just be like, I'll just Google it and see what it looks like. Because you can see what Koreans are thinking when they Google it. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So um, that's yeah, what I do. yeah, it's interesting. Note taking, it seems to me that the role of note taking really is only about letting your mind focus on it for more time. It's like. Uh, yeah, no, kind of. It's like, I don't know. It's, I think some people think that writing it down will help them remember, but they never look at it again. Yeah, well, it's the act but of it writing exists. it. Yeah, the act of writing it is supposed to, like, help, but it's so, like, vague and it's kind of time-consuming, actually, when you think about it. Yeah. I think it really I think matters... If you want to do it, you can do it. I think it really matters how uh, you're able to discover your own mental process of memorizing things and what makes it work yeah, better yeah, because because for some people writing it down it just it's it's literally just your mind putting uh focusing on this word for that much longer but if you just 
copy it mindlessly, I don't think that that will really help. It's, it's like a rep, you know? Yeah. Like, if you think about how an anchor it's like, okay, I've seen the word on here, I write it down, okay, I've seen the word again. So that's like two reps, you know? Like, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It, it depends how you just think about things, but it, and it also depends what kind of notes. Like, if you're just like writing down notes, like, and it's all in English except like one little part, it's like, I don't know, man. I can't say if it's you worth or not, you know, like it's just, it just yeah. is a hundred percent dependent on the person. Like if you do it and you think it's worth it, you might as well just keep doing it. Like, yeah, that's, that's the way it is. Like you were talking about the high kick. Uh, some of these situations were so perfect for the word. Um, yeah, I think that kind of helps me when I hear a situation that, or when I see a situation, you know, one of the first times I noticed that happening was when I heard somebody say cop chuggy in the show. And it was like somebody yeah. like out of nowhere said something crazy and he was just like cop joggy and and I was yeah, like yeah, oh yeah. okay like yeah that's like suddenly out of nowhere like all of a sudden yeah there's a lot of words that a, especially like um all like the exclamations and stuff exclamations are so easy to pick up like it's just unreal uh nerva says I learn languages with experiences uh a word sticks better in my mind if I have a memory involving this word in, uh, in particular. Uh, I've got a point on this actually. So I'm in a different Discord that was like created a long time ago because we all got kicked from Billy's Discord. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so, but basically, one of the things is like, I usually that's where I usually like share the words. Like, if I share a word there, even just like talking about the word, then you have another memory of like, oh, oh, we posted that word the other day. So like, oh, oh yeah, you did, you did. And it's like, oh yeah, see, now we know what it is because we can look back at it. And it's like, oh yeah, now I remember what it is. And it's just like, everything about your memory is like, just having extra, like what's it called? It's like, so if you know the hanja, oh, that's another thing. And like, yeah. Oh, if you ate the food, it's going to be easier for you to remember what the food was called. Yeah. Like, and it's just, so, there's so many different things you can add to make your memory like better. Yeah. You know? And I think, uh, in fact, this is similar to something that was in Nerva's uh, stream earlier. She was talking about um, memories with songs and stuff. She remembers like the temperature of the room when she was listening to like a specific song at a certain time or something like that. You know, yeah, all yeah. of these the different senses. Crazy, you know, like... Yeah. And so if you can actually you can use that to your benefit, you can uh, yeah, you can yeah. remember, you can associate words with uh other senses and memories of other senses to help build your map of memory and like I how... <laughs> Go on. yeah you know like me, like imagining a situation where you would have used this word and what that room f where that what that felt like you know what uh maybe what smells were in the air uh what the room looked like you know maybe maybe not if it's a bad smell you know like <laughs> or maybe you do that's probably better than a good smell <laughs> like, <"Whoa." laughs> but no, I was, I was thinking, what I was going to say is, um, I imagine somebody just like takes this to the extreme and they're like, okay, that, oh, that's a verb, ice. That's a noun. Hot water, hot, like hot water. Like, no, oh, like they're just taking it way too extreme and like. <laughs> yeah, like experiential <laughs> memory uh, modification. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I am not immersing until. I'm touching something like oh, I'm touching wood. Okay, I'm gonna watch this TV show now, and I can't move my hands. And, and like, like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> it's gonna be too much fun. <laughs> or just like learning, learning the word for tired, and they go out and like work themselves to death, and like yeah, work out, like, and they're like, oh, I'm like, so oh. tired. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way to go. Man. Yeah, <laughs> just give yourself if you're serious. Uh, you know, I think it would be good if you were just like trying to get like a few words. If you were trying to get like a five hundred words, you could probably actually do that for every single one and be like, "Yeah, <laughs> I know all these words now." Yeah. Uh, and and then every time you go for a run, you gotta gotta say the word. Right. Just keep repping it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that would that would definitely help them sink in deep. I think it's it's not scalable it, well, it doesn't scale very well to like you know yeah, well, twenty five thousand words studies, someone needs to get the, get the studies on this one for sure <laughs> what well, ben just said <laughs> learn the word for punch punch yourself in the face works really well yeah, just yeah. you just punch, you know you could just punch yourself oh, oh i've seen that word but i can't remember it punch yourself in the leg yeah like, that's it oh <laughs> i'll remember it next time like get, uh, that might actually help you know like you just never yeah know. self so self abuse that could, like, that'll help could, I, it's like um i think i said this before in the in the discord and i was like you can learn a word if you were thinking about the word just just randomly you could that's like a rep 
you know, like it's like another rep, like, oh, I thought about that word, and then that's another rep. And then there are so many things like that. Like, if somebody kept thinking about Korean in their head, and you didn't, they could probably get better quicker than you. you just, and the thing is, you'll never know, because you can't really see inside someone's head. It's like one of those just like weird things that will it'll never be studied, but it's just the cool concept that it probably does actually like affect you quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's uh, there are certain things with memory that are very deep, deeply connected, and then some that are surface. You know, like remembering a word, how it's spelled and stuff. It's kind of on the surface, but like remembering, uh, remembering the way that uh, something smells or you know tastes. Those are actually deeper memories, I think. Like, like more yeah, vague, so. but they're like they sink you in know, deeper. I think it's um. It's like you you have less experiences of that specific thing. Like you have less experiences of eating food than you do just like looking at something because you're looking at stuff all the time. Yeah, for sure. On, on the, so the guy, the crowd, yeah, I said about this comment about the the fridge. So I was asking my girlfriend before. I was like, oh, what what do you call a freezer? And she was like, oh, we don't. Do, no one says freezer. Everyone just says ninjango. Yeah. I was like. Uh, okay then yeah and then the amount of te- times yeah i've seen ning dong shu in the in every book yeah and everything i've seen it like a hundred times and even watching a cooking show it comes up and she's like no one ever uses it so you can't trust native speakers they don't know what they're talking about yeah they don't got a clue what they're talking about like they just don't know anything and don't even ask me about english because i don't know anything about english <laughs> right people ask me all i can say is yes that oh yeah, yeah that sounds all right oh no 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 that doesn't sound good yeah it's really important. It's like that's part of why you have to kind of figure things out yourself sometimes. It's like getting getting yeah. clarifications uh, from other people who have learned it really well. That can sometimes help, but also even then you can't just always rely on on what other people say. You have to you have to kind of figure it out yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the thing is everyone has a different experience. Like the way that you talk and the way that I talk is not the same, and the way that we yeah. think is not the same. So if someone asks you a question and asks me, they're gonna get a different answer every single time. Yeah. It's like, what, what's that app um, that people post on? Hello Talk, is it? Uh, and um, they yeah. post their thing and they get like a thousand corrections, oh, all <laughs> native speakers, and they're all completely different. Like, <laughs> okay, then, so I'm not, I'm not using that website ever. Like, <laughs> it's such a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, so funny. See, like, like, oh, I don't know, man. It's just, not, it's not worth it. Like, it's completely not worth it. Yeah, if I think about even just within the U.S., people speaking American English um, in all of the different states that I've lived in, the different types of uh, accent, the different types of of language, vocab, slang, everything, you know? When I'm hanging out in Houston, Texas, and they're in, in, in the middle of a city with 10 million people, you know, that's that's gonna be different than like 50 miles down the road in a small town in Texas. Uh, and yeah, exactly. versus like the other side of the, the state or the other side of the of the country, you know, just the types of things that people are gonna say, it's so different. Um, yeah, and I know not, even, a... on, sorry. Uh, yeah, I know even in like Korea, there's just like, just from one person to the next, you just, somebody's gonna be like focusing on different words and have learned yeah, different exactly. things. Everyone thinks different and like, everyone's got different experiences of input, even in their own native language. Like actually kind of crazy yeah i actually read a lot when i was a kid um i didn't (laughs) i remember reading i read a lot of pokemon i specifically remember pokemon because it was like i was maybe like five years old four years old and i was playing like pokemon red and pokemon blue and there is quite a lot of text in those games actually and there is so many words that i didn't know and i would come to find out like later Mm mm-hmm yeah and anyway that's what i was gonna say what damn fine you just said yeah so basically like the amount of like range we have in our accents here is like ridiculous. Like, two hours, two hours is is fucking huge here. Like like you're gonna be from where I live, you'll be in London, or you can be in like Leeds, or you can be in Liverpool, and the accents are like like completely different. Whereas like in somewhere like America, I don't think the accent like uh, the variation is not as big. Like in in a in a short amount of space. Yeah. Uh, part, partly because there isn't like loads of small cities and small towns so close to each other because it's like such a large distance between things yeah the yeah the, the it always has surprised me the the different english accents just because of how close you guys are and how different yeah, they are yeah. but, but it's like that all over europe as well it's not just like english and like the uk it's, it's actually like if you go to like germany and italy and france 
and you go like north to south they sound completely different and like it's actually crazy how that because it's just so old it's just so old that like sometimes they actually like speak completely different languages like basque and stuff and yeah like, all these random languages that like it's still partly related to the the main language but then it's like the main language is just like from london or the main language is just from paris and then it's just spread out like like you have like the standard in korea that is literally like one variation of that language because if you go to other regions they have especially if they're old as hell they talk yeah. completely different like it's like not even the same words or nothing yeah like even when i think of when i think of old people in um i think i think especially right now that's that's probably bigger a bigger difference than ever before just from my experience of the u.s younger generations versus older generations of uh, how they sound it's like because of the widespread yeah, yeah. of of but internet it's, yeah it's the internet yeah the internet one have you, have you ever i don't know if you've ever had this but um here when people go to university if they go to like a different university they come back and they sound completely different like it's actually ridiculous <laughs> even, even like they can go there for like I don't know, how long's a term like uh, a term is probably like three months maybe three months, so you've got, like, three months and they'll come back and they sound completely like <laughs> what but the thing is they don't sound like there they don't sound like that place it's like they've all gone from different places and they've it's like their own accent uh, like, it's like the like university the university accent, accent. Like, it's so weird <laughs> yeah and then like everyone goes to a different university and have a different university accent it's so crazy yeah. like how it works that's interesting i did notice that a lot with my uh with my hometown um because i grew up in a small town and everybody kind of picks up a similar sort of uh accent and dialect and then whenever they move to a different state uh or to a larger city and you know socialized with a completely different accent you know people when they come back you notice the changes but i think it's smaller in the u.s i don't know I don't know if it's yeah, pronounced. I, I think that's that's to do with the thing. I think that's to do with like the the distance. Like, like if somebody went from California to New York, and they come back sounding like they were from New York, you'd be like, "Whoa!" Like, it's because it's quite quite different, isn't it? Like the accent. Yeah, there. yeah. And, like, and the difference between like you know Kentucky, like rural Kentucky, and uh, you know somebody from like Michigan, uh, you know, or like North Dakota, they yeah. where they sound almost Canadian. Yeah, well, that's another thing as well. It's, it's hard for me to differentiate between like Canadians, but I can tell differences in like Australia. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, to me, Australian all sounds the same. <laughs> yeah, that's basically the same thing. Um. Yeah, so I was gonna say between old people and and young people, it's like, uh, when I think of somebody like from uh from like Montana, for instance, it's like a, a kind of a Western, uh, rural state. The old people sound, they've got like this thick accent, you know, from compared yeah. to el elsewhere, but young people have less of an accent. And I think that's yeah, it, true, it, like, like that here all well, over, except for places like Boston, Massachusetts, and like, uh, you know, New York, but even like people like, it, it's for most of the of the US people are their their average dialect and um, accent is kind of more merging together I think yeah especially um I think it's partly to do like public school you know like mainly because every it, that's why the younger generation sound completely like even the middle generation like 40 year olds and stuff they don't their accent and stuff is not as strong as like 60 year olds and 80 year olds and stuff it's like anyway taking this into language learning like so um fuck. that was hard so different people are more susceptible to pick up an accent like 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 somebody can like there isn't there's this irish woman who, who's lived here like in my city for like four years and she still sounds like completely irish like 100 percent, never even picked up a, a single like <laughs> Idiolect or dialect or sociolect or whatever, like never picked up anything, even remotely like that's around here. And yeah. it's like, but then some people can just like go to a comp like different place for three months and then they can sound completely different. Like, but I think that that it, it has something to do with language learning as well. You know, like the people it must people who are more susceptible to that. 
yeah. you'll also be better at picking up like the accent of the of the language. Yeah, and I think there's like some sort of um I think I would put it into two categories. Uh there are there are people who are good at listening uh to subtle differences, like they have a really tuned ear you know people like musicians i yeah, think are really yeah. able to really pick up the timbre differences they're used to listening very intently moment to moment with with a concentrated attention on the changes of timbre and and shape and tone and pitch and all of this um but then also there's people who i think are uh i would say more naturally like sympathetic um who are are just going to like intuitively notice those small differences and just kind of somewhat imitate them in in an it, it's kind of like uh wanting to wanting to connect with somebody and being yeah, em to, empathetic like, be and sympathetic them. yeah yeah i think there's some amount of that i think that... There's, a, there's a lot of mental like processes going on like that you don't even know and like like when i was young i didn't live here so i had like a yorkshire accent i don't know if you know what that sounds like but not by like name completely different to you and, it, no, and it's like early on and then i moved here and then i basically had this accent like really thick like both was like thick i think the change in the accent as well and like it's just if you're used to a lot of different accents maybe you're better off at picking up the differences of other languages as well like on top of just like it's like if you listen to australian accent and you can understand it 100 percent that's like a different language basically because mm. it's all different sounds and all different a completely different way of speaking yeah that's a good point I, I always want studies man i want so many studies but it's like you can't you can't even you can't even do the studies that i'm saying like you could it's not even anything to do with funding it's just you literally just can't do it because you can't see inside people's heads yeah it is and tough like, you can't control what people think so it's like impossible yeah it's hard to measure i mean to, in order to study something you have to be able to kind of accurately measure it and language yeah, like, acquisition I'll, is I'll tough <laughs> completely impossible yeah like you can't choose whether someone thinks about something outside yeah. of the experiment like you can't choose that exactly so maybe they're just count as an anomaly or something i don't know. maybe you just got to get as many people as you can and just hope that the brain has some kind of like middle ground yeah statistical averages and and stuff yeah. like that um so one of the things i wanted to talk about uh you know as we maybe get getting closer to wrapping up our conversation yeah, cool. uh i was curious about um learning uh or playing games in korean because you have some experience in this area oh, yeah, yeah. you you're a pretty big gamer uh yeah I and it's just... you play uh you play some games in, on the switch right on in korean yeah i've also played like league of legends as well and everything and like like in, in korean actually i've played the first time i ever played it in korean was when I was in Korea and it was actually crazy like if you've ever been to a PC bang yet it's like it's, it's like uh, it's, you wouldn't be able to have that here like it's too nice and yeah. people would just like steal the whole thing like it's just never it's never gonna happen here yeah like, it's just way too nice like it's better than like what you could buy like in the shops and then it, it just I don't know and you just can't compare but anyway playing games it, it's hard to do because you have to like I don't know what game you've been playing because I, I haven't actually watched, but I'll have to, I'll have to check, check it out there. Anyway, so playing games where, like, so I don't know if you ever played like Xenoblade or just like, I don't know, any game where the text is just like going and going and going and going and going and you can't stop it. It's yeah. like, it's, it's not worth it because yeah. you can't, you can't process it quicker unless you're really good at the language anyway, which, by, by which point you're not playing to learn, you're just playing for the fun of it, you know, like you, that's, that's what your aim should be really is like to play. But even with anything like you're, you're listening to get better at listening you're playing to get better at like playing the games in the language you're just playing to get better at the language yeah but any game that you can stop the text or like has a lot of menus like rpgs and stuff like i played um path of exile as well mm. that's pretty good but when you get to the parts where people are talking you just like you just blank out and like, you yeah. just can't be bothered anyway so like, <laughs> you just look at the item names like yeah oh that's nice and then you just go but it, there's exactly. a big problem it's like with your phone settings nobody wants to sit there in the menu looking at the setting so you just you give up you just give up you just look at it and go oh, i don't care and then you just carry on so i don't know They're okay i would say definitely something like pokemon is really good like it's just too it's too good because it's simple because it's like made for children 
they use all simple language and they say like really basic things as a, like in when the characters talk and there's like a decent amount of t uh, text yeah i think that that's uh that actually is important um and the what you discovered is basically what i have you know i can report is what i've discovered it's it's the idea that um Turn-based things are OP when it comes to this because you can spend as yeah, much time as you need to. Stop, son. <laughs> yeah. Stop and it's like, yeah. Um, and what I found that it was that trying to read too much of the dialogue, most of that is over my head. So dialogue-heavy stuff yeah. is not really good for me uh, at my level. Um, you know, at that point, I would just probably just would need to like read a book or something. But. Um, yeah, books are really good man. Like, item descriptions what i've i've noticed i've been playing these card games and it'll have like a small description um on the on the item or a description of what it does uh, of the actions and then also just the names of the cards so these have been these have been pretty good and i think i think some some games with items like path of exile or uh diablo 3 i booted up diablo yeah. 3 a couple of days ago and was about to start learning it, but um, there's so much to start with. It's like kind of overwhelming. Yeah, there's a lot, you know. <laughs> you know, you don't realize. Oh. My Discord, uh, my Discord dropped out again. We'll get him back in here. Are we back? Are we back? We're back. I think we're back. Yeah, we're back. And my uh yeah thanks for the follow ben i appreciate that thank you i actually did make you first um you know, what were we saying we were talking about uh i think see i, I was i was talking about He's talking about diablo and stuff like that like yeah you would, yeah uh, you started up diablo and then like it's just too much but yeah, yeah that was it that was it so when you you gotta think of how many years and years and years and years we were like playing games and you just build up like these really small words like when have you ever seen like bastard sword outside of like <laughs> yeah like a, a game like you never see bastard sword, and the only time you, and, and the only reason you remember it is because you just think like oh, bastard, bastard. Like, you know, yeah you don't know what it means you don't know what it means or anything. Yeah. It's just like, oh, like it's funny and like there's so, especially path of exile there's so many words in there that a lot, like a lot of the weapons have these really weird names in it like yeah. even in english it's like they never you're never gonna see that name like um like one of the daggers is called stiletto which you're only gonna see for like a li like an actual knife and like a, a shoe in it like so it's, it's really specific language as well like in a lot of games and yeah that's why pokemon's good because a lot of the dialogue isn't it's not just random words that you it's not like video game like vocabulary yeah i think um I think that's what I want to focus on pretty soon is is uh, so I've been playing uh, Slay the Spire, which is pretty good because I'm mostly just learning the card names and most of them are, are yeah. all right. But also I've run into the situation of translation uh, errors, think translating some things too literally yeah, thing as well. It's like, yeah, like you get like an exact translation when it, it doesn't really mean that like like sometimes the word has two meanings, but the person translating it doesn't know yeah uh i had i ran into one where it was like belly headbutt is how it was translated like they used the word for headbutt but it was like hitting somebody yeah. with the belly so it was like well, i know that a korean wouldn't use this to describe I that i probably wouldn't even understand it like yeah this one, they'll be like what yeah so but we we've had this as well we've like like if you think about like anime and stuff like that where it's been like translated from japanese and you like there's loads of things from like even like Pokemon Red and Blue where it's translated so funny that it's like it's become a meme on the internet. Like, like anything yeah. that's become a meme is like that's what you can think of as like a bad translation. Yeah, <laughs> like pretty much. Um, but I would like to find some more games. I think on PC that would be good for my level. Uh, some like turn-based games like that. Um, so I might think yeah, about yeah, doing. I, I might think about doing some emulation if I can get my hand on some Korean. Uh, oh, it's hard to find ROMs. Them, like really old games. I had oh on Emu Paradise shut down now. There was um, Pokemon Gold. There was Pokemon Silver in Korean. I'll see if I've got it, and then I'll send it yeah, because you can't get it anymore. No, I've deleted it. All right, but it was on there in Korean, and it's like the only game you can get like 
I know that the DS games can play in Korean as well, but finding actual Korean games is like impossible for like old, uh. older stuff. Because a lot of games weren't like it because of like the Japan and Korean relationship. They didn't have like the PS2 and stuff. Like there was only like a few people that had it, and like there wasn't like no translated games or nothing. Um. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, I think I might. If I might, if I'm gonna get into it, I might have to just end up like buying a Switch or something. Something that would be easier. Yeah, Switch, I, is, Switch is good because there's just so many games on it now. Yeah, and they, they advertise it a lot in Korea. And there's like a whole YouTube channel for it and everything, so I can see mm. what games are coming out, and you can tell if it's gonna be in Korean then. Because if they don't release the trailer, it's not, it's definitely not in Korean. Like. Yeah, um, there there are quite a few games that are translated to Korean um, on PC. But a lot of them are not yeah, quite. Loads and loads and loads. A lot of them are not. A lot of the ones that I have are not quite great for learning. So I think I'd like to go through some and spend some time finding some better games. Because learning, uh, playing, I play games on stream here, and it can be pretty fun when it's working out well. Uh, but sometimes it's like it's a bit rough. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it, it's hard because it's like the, the domain thing, isn't it? It's like you need like video game vocabulary. It's like it's like its own domain. So if you wanted to do that, you would just have to like just go hard on the video games and like just get all the different like words that come up. Yeah. Uh, well, retro. I think we've covered uh, quite a bit of stuff today. I think so. it's been a while. Yeah, and. Uh... I'm I'm really happy that you uh, wanted to come on the show and come on the stream, um, and I was really glad that you know we I was able to like you know ask you some questions and get your thoughts on some different stuff. Um, I know we I get to see you you know talking all the time in the Discord, but sometimes it's great to just like you know have yeah, an actual like conversation. An actual, like, yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, I'm not not really on the. Uh... I don't really like do the videos and stuff so no one really sees me you know exactly yeah although i mean i know i was talking with you uh about it in the past about how it would be cool if one day you did um oh, no i've tried it you know it's, it's <laughs> so difficult to just sit there and, like talk at a camera and you know what? now that i've tried it myself like a few times it's like you just get respect for the people doing it like <laughs> i like, just feel like oh, i don't even know how you do it man. like i don't even like um oh, who is it the girl I think her name's Tarina or something, or that's her last name or something. I can't remember. Like uh, Valeria, that's one. Valeria, yeah, Valeria. She literally like went to a park and like made a video on the ground. And it's like, how are you doing that, man? Like that's so yeah. difficult to do. Like to just sit in front of a camera and make a video. Like it, it's it's actually a skill. Like it's definitely a skill that you need to like make if you want to do. You want to get into like video making and stuff. I yeah, I absolutely believe that. Um, there's this one British dude who does monologues. Uh. Tom Scott, do you know him? Oh yeah, I know him. And he does like um, like loads of really weird videos. Like yeah, he, he's like um, I, I guess a lot of hate, you know. Does every he? Time I, like, look at the comment. Yeah, every time I look at the comments, or like if I I saw one of his videos posted on Reddit, and like someone was like calling him some flipping, calling him like a midget and everything. I was like, that's a bit fucking harsh, <laughs> that's right? It's like, weird. <laughs> he probably didn't even watch the video. He just saw it. Like, yeah, fuck you. So, yeah. <laughs> hate this guy yeah the thing is online as well you can get so much hate over nothing like literally nothing it's true like, i know I, I imagine that even on your videos you probably got like videos like oh you know, speak some korean and like oh you suck and like all this and it's like, I've, you literally haven't done anything like <laughs> i've literally gotten just, those like, comments before uh yeah, exactly. and it's it's like 100%. it's like look i'm just i'm just here to share my you know my perspective and to share my journey and you know i was as people are gonna hate it's because they've like, got some weird issue with themselves or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know it, that's actually what it is. You know, like it's actually crazy. And like part of it is because it's because everything's like anonymous. Like there's no backlash to just posting whatever you want. So it's just like it's just free, <laughs> free game, and it like yeah, like, I'm just gonna post this. But, and the best part is it's like. I posted it, closed the thing, log out my account, and, never, and so you never, they never even see the reply, so there's no point replying to it. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. They're just like, all right, close the account, I'm gone, see you later. And it's just like, they're just doing it to get to you, you know, like, exactly. that's the, the whole point of it. Exactly. I know, sometimes they'll say a bunch of shit, and then they will refuse to look on, at replies, because I think part of it is because they know that they would be affected by, like, they would, they would feel that yeah, way yeah, by those right. replies, so they just don't look at it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that, that that's the point of doing it. It's just just to get on the person's like nerves and so then it's like it's just yeah, 
That's always good trolling. Um, well, yeah, I don't know if anybody in chat had any uh, extra questions they wanted to ask. I, I know some people have been asking Retro some questions throughout the uh, conversation. Yeah, I might have missed a couple. Are there any Switch games with Korean voice? Oof. That's I think a good the question. Marvel, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 has it. Oh. Oh, that makes sense but, to me, actually, cause, because of how oof. popular Marvel is in Korea. Oh, is it? Is it I don't even know if it's popular. Like, I know uh, the, the, the scene in Black Panther was popular. I know that much. <laughs> but I don't know much yet. But, yeah, the um, end game, all of that stuff. Korean voice. Oh, um, advent what's it called? Ring Fit Adventure, that has Korean voice. So, other than that, I don't know anymore. Mm. Yeah. Uh, ben says, you guys should do this again in a few months. Retro has a lot of interesting things to say. Yeah, I agree. He does have a lot of good oh, stuff to share. Just a few months there, like six or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, give yeah. It a bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> give it a bit of time. Well, yeah, it gives time time to reset. We need, uh, need to get some more people on first. Yeah, you'll be having Matt on next, so it's like, you know. <laughs> just get and Matt I, on I, here next. <laughs> yeah, just Matt. Yeah, Matt's on. Let's get no one else. Uh, he's on every week. Yeah, I'll definitely be getting more people, um, more people on because I think it's, I think it's fun to be able to hear the, the thoughts of different people in the community, especially in the Korean community. There's not a lot of, there's a ton of people who t are talk about Japanese, right? But yeah, that, 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 that's really annoying, man. Like, see, yeah, I think that's partly to do with the fact that the server that we're in is MIA. You know, like because these people, like MIA, is like literally synonymous with Japanese, and like, every time you go on. Even the subreddit, it's like people post, like, oh, I need some books or something. It's like, what yeah. language are you learning? And it's like, but everyone, it's like they just presume that MIA is Japanese. Like, exactly. That, it's kind of bad, really. Yeah. But hopefully it'll change and I don't know. But it, it, it's different. It's an interesting community, definitely. Like, not just, not just here, but like the whole Korean, like, learning community in a whole. Because it's like, a lot of people have got like different things like um i don't know if i posted jeremy the motivate korean one so motivate korean he like he he's like on a different level like a different scale because he he's literally like oh just do passive listening like like repetitive not just passive but like repetitive listening just do yeah. repetitive listening all the time yeah. and it's like nobody else in even in learning languages like as a whole says that and he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's like yeah I, yeah I got, I got. he's good at korean yeah <laughs> and he literally like Mostly learn just he's just like yeah just listen just listen like a shit yeah, yeah like and it's like yeah he's definitely got a new age vibe he's like a hippie man like right proper, a little like, bit really yeah hippie. like yeah man he's like he, I, I emailed him the other day and he was like oh, I'm just like doing up an RV and stuff oh, I've been busy because I've been doing this working on this RV and I was like an RV wow. in like 2020 that's, <laughs> that's that's pretty 70s man that's like, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah got, he, he, he's into meditation as well he was like mm -hmm. one of the first people that i saw talking about meditation it was like a big thing yeah because he's like really into that as you do as a, as a hippie <laughs> right um yeah i think motivate korean i i caught some of his stuff before i found the mia stuff and the repetitive listening was something i tried but I, when i was trying it i didn't know i was at the start you know so it was it was yeah, still yeah, yeah, i'd listen i'd find these like three minute clips listen to them over and over again just three minutes that's it and i couldn't pick out anything you know and i would listen to it like for like 50 times but uh yeah, yeah, no, no, but he actually states that it's like you just do it to get the sound in your head yeah exactly it doesn't matter what the words are you get the sound in your head and then later on you ask a, if you can hear a sound perfectly you can say it to someone and they'll be like oh, oh no that, that's this and they'll be like oh, okay yeah you know I mean? like anyone can do that and it happens like people have probably done that to you in english as well like oh, what does this mean and you're like, oh, it means this. It's mm -hmm. just the same thing, really, but it's just a different language. Yeah, he the, the repetitive listening did actually help. It was just it was hard to see why it was going to help at the beginning. Um, but uh, I've kind of taken his approach a little bit, but with longer form content. Now I, I've listened to these yeah. condensed audios of of these web dramas that are about an hour to an hour and a half long, condensed. Yeah. Um, and so I've listened to them. Uh, for months now regularly i almost like every the, day the same, the same series or do you the just same go to i have like f i have like a rotating cast of five that i've listened to just and most of them it was just like split between three uh where yeah. i listen to at least one of those once a day 
for an hour and a half. And yeah, so I've got, I've got like a, a similar thing with podcasts, and mm-hmm. I just have like this set of like twenty podcasts, and they're like an hour long. I just listen to them, and but because I don't put that much time into it, so it, it doesn't get the repetition. Yeah. So I'd, it, that's why you need to strike a balance between the length, the length to get the repetition, and then the what's it as well. Like if it's an hour, I think an hour is too long, you know. Yeah. Like for the repetition. For the repetition part, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but but that's the thing though. Is it worth doing repetition, or is it worth just just going and going and going and going yeah. and going? Because you're gonna get the repetition of the really common words anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just a choice, really. Yeah, and I that's know which one would be better. That's why I think I like the what I have been doing um, at work because I do this while I'm at work. Um, yeah. And I listen to these. It's it's repetitive in some sense. I know so many of the lines by heart, you know, in all the different <laughs> scenes. I can say it along with them. I can act out the scene, you know, like something. Yeah. Like I know exactly how it goes. But there's so much of it that it's not quite. It's not quite like listening to the same thing 40, 50 it, times. It just never ends. It never ends. It never ends. And it's just like so much. There's just so much Korean. It's unreal. And yeah. Even even people who are doing it like ten years and like. Like even like Tyler been doing it 15 years and he's really fucking like up the like top level of like foreigners. He just like constantly comes across new words like yeah. all the time. I think even native speakers must come across new words all the time. Yeah. Because there's just so many words and a lot of them just mean the exact same thing anyway. Yeah. It feels so rare in English to, for me. I don't you know. To find a new word like it's ridiculous. Yeah. I think the, the latest word I found was like delineate. I was like, "What the fuck does that mean?" Yeah, that's like, that's never... a word you kind of have to look up because you can't really, can't really f- figure out what it means based yeah, on the, the, what the, it the is. The meaning doesn't mean like what the word is saying, like yeah. delineate. Like, oh, oh, okay then. <laughs> but it's it's really rare. Like, it, 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 I don't even, I don't even think you could read things on purpose that would have these words. Like, you could unless you read like some really old book written in like the nineteen hundred, well, like nineteen hundreds. Like those kind of books, they they've got some like really old words that aren't really used anymore. Yeah. Like or, or like the word is used in a way that's different to how we use it now. Yeah. And I think yeah, I think I did learn a lot of words from um I learned I learned most of the words I knew from like context because I, I read a lot of books when I was a kid. And when, yeah. if I was reading something like Charles Dickens, you know, I'd come across new words. I didn't look up a lot of them because I would yeah, see yeah, it I enough bet, times. Yeah, that's another thing as well. It's like yeah, even when you you don't look up a word, you still can kind of guess them in after a few, especially when you know so many words like around it. Like if yeah. it's just that one word, and you see just that one word in a couple, like in a couple of things, it's definitely like passive vocab. Yeah, I'm not, I'm sure, not quite what, sure what you mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Every word's like passive vocab, man. <laughs> Every single word is passive vocab. Like, once you see a word, like you probably, how many words do we know? Like thirty thousand in English, or like twenty-five thousand, depends on how like read you are, well read you are. And it's like you probably only use like five thousand of those words on a daily on a daily basis. I don't even think I say five thousand words. Like I literally yeah. just like not saying anything. So I don't know. Like you know what it means even if you never saw it. Because of the uh, act, active vocab, okay, you know. Yeah, I think that could happen through the context yeah, as well as see, i think that it's easier in korean you know like way easier because because of the hands are they just use one and i just had another one on yeah it means something okay cool thanks bye <laughs> it happens too many times but english is like how many words how many words is that like how are you supposed to know what check means like check check uh, if you've the first time you've heard it impossible it doesn't have a meaning to it like it just it's just a word you know like yeah. How are you supposed to guess? Like, it's impossible to guess because it's just a selection of letters that have no meaning. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Um. Well, so yeah, I think uh, I think in a few months, you know, down the road, uh, I'd love to have you back on the show. What? Well, maybe we'll have something new to yeah, talk sorry. about. I'm sure I'll have new experiences to talk about and yeah. uh, new questions for you. Have to start watching the. Um... You have to start watching the sitcoms on. The sitcoms are so good for me. Oh, dude, I've been I've been listening to them a lot lately. Yeah. As far as passive immersion yeah, they're goes, really good, man. And, and you, you know what is? It's not even the language that's the best part about the sitcom. It's it's like the cultural aspect. Oh yeah, because they literally do stuff 
that is in the culture and it's like there is so many things in the culture, and you can learn so many cultural things just from that like it's actually ridiculous i feel like i've gotten a lot of flavor of that recently yeah from that show it's definitely worth watching the the thing is is i want to that guy has like a lot of shows so i've watched like four different ones and they're like 60 hours long each wow uh, it's called High Kick. Well, there's High Kick One, High Kick Two, High Kick Three, and then uh, he has Kamja Build, and then it's a, there's a new one as well that I want to watch. It's literally just come out, but uh, I found the link the other day because I was trying to look for it for a while. But um, yeah, this guy has like eight or nine sitcoms, so I'm gonna go back with like back and watch like loads of them. Like I'm just gonna watch all of them because it's really good content for like cultural and the language is pretty simple. Yeah, but then they'll just. Like there is a lot of like food and stuff like food that you never thought of or like just things and because it's such like a satirical thing upon their own culture yeah like, you, you get more from it you know like it's not like if you just watch a detective drama you, you don't get anything really like you might maybe they'll go to like a kimbab shop or something you know what i mean like that's not really that much but it's, it's just it's just that kind of thing that you need yeah i I would love to uh watch it more and i i have been um and i do think right now being able to find content with subtitles is helping me uh because i can read the subtitles a lot and get a little bit more mileage out of it but just watching high kick has been a lot of fun uh ben says retro is going to need to link all these shows in a blog post sounds like a great idea for a blog post some some uh tv recommendations I'll type them all out. This was actually, so the first one is called Gotchimopshi Haiki. And this one is where I actually learned the word Gotchimopshi, yeah, like Gotchimopshi. Because it is like the only play, it makes complete sense. Like, you know, um, what else is there? Ah, uh, let's see. So Jibung is like the roof. And then Tulko Haiki. That's number two, and then what's the last one? I'm just gonna copy this from the thing because it's really long. Wait. There you go. That's the last one. So there's all the TV. Well, the free they're the free TV shows. There's all Kamja Kam as well. That's that's pretty good. But because they're like over different time frames as well. So one was like 2006, 2009, 2011, 2014. You get like different like things, and there's lots of like cameos of people as well. It's really good, and it's like um similar with the reading. I've, what I've been reading is like really long like web novels so like because they're so long and the vocab continuously gets like um well Crawlage is subscribed oh my gosh that's crazy <laughs> dude Aaron thank you <laughs> wow five gifted subs oh, well, dude like giggers, huh? um Dude, Aaron, thank you. By the way, guys, that's my brother. Uh, So, (laughs) Uh, (laughs) thank you so much. Wow. That's huge. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, some people who aren't even here are getting it, I think. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But they... That's crazy. But yeah, every... uh, Wow, fan basically got one. Crawlhead got one. Uh, Duck. Sasha Studies. Forgotten Mechanics. Wow. That's crazy. It's a very generous pro you have. Thought your viewers wouldn't mind it. Keep them sticking around. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Uh, yeah. He, he, probably, he, he bought the green screen, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I got, I bought the green screen. Uh, but oh. he did help me get. He did. He has helped me. Like he helped me get the uh, the books. Uh, yeah. I bought a bunch of books. They're still at his house because I haven't gone down there and got them. I can't really read them too much yet. Anyway, <laughs> I, I bought a bunch of Sorry. Korean books off of uh, off the classified oh, ads. Like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah. Giga was buying some of those as well. But yeah, literally none here. Like none, just nowhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm gonna, I got I got plans to pick stuff up when I go to Korea. There's so many books I want to get. But it's it's not because like, I got I don't want to buy them on the on like ebook. Uh, just because I want to, I want to read it, and I'm going to read it again later. On. Yeah. Uh, and then Aaron, thank you for subscribing with your Twitch Prime sub- subscription. I appreciate that. <laughs> Getting the most mileage out of it. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, it just reminded me. I need to follow you on Twitch afterwards. Ah, cool. Yeah. Um, Nervous says, "Congratulations on the 100 followers." I didn't realize. Thank you. Yeah, we just did that today at the beginning of the stream. 
He was right at the beginning, like before he even started. Yeah. <laughs> um, crazy. So yeah, I think uh, that was a good conversation, and I look forward to the next one. So um, I I know we ate into your uh, reading time a little bit today. Uh, no, no, I've already finished reading. I think right. I always read. I always read first thing in the morning because you see, yep. you're just so fresh, like you're yep. so fresh, and you just anky read. I love it. it. It's in, it's an important habit to recognize. I think for any of our listeners, <laughs> anybody out there, read in the morning. It really for me, I've noticed it's the best too. The it's, been, um, it's just because it's hard to do, you know. Like you just you just lose so much focus in the afternoon. If you try and read in the afternoon, just forget it. Yeah, forget it. Just just listen and watch. Just chill. Uh, so yeah, man. Uh, I, this is good, and I, I will uh, will let you go. But thank you so much for the discussion. Yeah, um, I'll give you the links and stuff to put in the description of like the fluency path and um, ah yes the blog and stuff, and then we'll we'll sort that afterwards. Uh, Absolutely. People can find find out and keep up with what I'm doing and whatever. We will include all of the links to all that good. It's good information and it'll be good for anybody to yeah. uh, find. I'll try to keep it. Like, if people want to suggest things, they can just like message me on Twitter and whatever, and I'll just I'll just write a blog. Like it only takes me like a couple, maybe like two hours to get like a full thing written out, and then but yeah. I can do one. I could do one every day if people like wanted to hear things. And you guys can follow Retro. I just dropped a link on Twitter. He he posts regularly on Twitter about uh, different. He posts when he writes a new article, uh, when he wa- has some words he wants to share. Some good stuff. Good Twitter to follow. Yeah. I like. I think I like the clips the most, just for myself. So and the clips. Look at them. Yeah. Yeah, and the clips. The clips are really good. The words. All right, man. Well, yeah. I will uh, catch you later. And uh, it was good to have you on. So, well, thank you. It's good to be here, isn't it? Yeah. Have yourself a good evening. All right, you too. I'm gonna go chill out and finish finish watching some sitcoms. Right. Sounds good. Thanks, <laughs> man. See ya. All right. Yeah. Bye, bye, retro.